All right, hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to my complete cassette collection video. Before I get started into my collection, I just wanted to show you my stereo that I actually play my tapes on. I've got a uh, Sony amplifier up there. It's an STR D450Z. Uh, I've got a Technique CD changer SLPD8. Uh, I've got two tape decks over here. Both of them are Sony. Uh, the first one is a TC WE475, which was manufactured in uh, 2001. Uh, I think it was the final year that uh, Sony actually made uh, cassette decks. And the other one down here is from 97. It's a TC WE405. So I've got another uh, tape deck in another room. It's a Techniques that went along with the uh, changer, but I'm not going to show it in this video. But uh, you know, I got my albums down here. I've got about a hundred. My CD collections right over here. I've got about, I don't know, a thousand or more uh, when it comes to that kind of deal. And then over here in this shelf, uh, I've got my cassettes and they're all in vintage tape cases. Uh, I got my KISS CD collection over here and then of course some KISS uh, figures up, up top and then I got some more KISS figures up top on that. But anyway, I have down here four, eight, 12 vintage tape cases. Uh, nine of them hold 60 each and three of them will hold 30 each. And then I've got these other two little uh, wood uh, cases, which I don't really have much in them. I've got some cassette singles in them. But pretty much they start down here uh, with the first tape case. And I do have s some sense of order to them. Uh, basically, I sort them by genre, by, by artist, and, uh, you know, I start off with hard rock, then I go into to just rock, and then we move into, like, R&B pop when, by the time we get up top. So, uh, we're going to start down here with tape case number one. So, let's just get it out. And we're going to start off. Uh, this is primarily Kiss. Uh, I do have some rat over here just to fill it all the way up. But uh, we're just going to start and go down and I'll show each one of them. We have Kiss's Psycho Circus. Uh, I think this goes for around 10 bucks. Uh, it's not my favorite Kiss album uh, by any means. You know, Ace had returned, Peter had returned. But uh, I thought it could have been much, much better than uh, what it ended up being. Uh, then we have Carnival of Souls. I'm not really a fan of this one either. Uh, a lot of people are, but uh, it's just not in my top. Uh, here we have Kiss, MTV Unplugged. Uh, this was the return of Ace and Peter. And, you know, this is a pretty good uh, tape right here. Uh, so, uh, glad to have that in the collection. Uh, come down here, we've got Revenge. Uh, awesome, awesome Kiss tape here. Uh, Gene kind of decided that he was going to come back and, uh, you know put a lot of effort into this Kiss album, whereas before he wasn't. Uh, this is produced by Bob Ezrin, who did Destroyer. And, uh, you know, this, this has got some phenomenal tracks. Unholy, uh, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, uh, Domino, uh, Thou Shalt Not is an amazing track. I Just Wanna. So, you know, there's some amazing, amazing tracks on here. Uh, a lot of people, it's their favorite non-makeup album. Mine is a uh, kick, lick it up. But anyway, here's Hot in the Shade. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of Hot in the Shade. I think there's some great tunes on here. Uh, Silver Spoon's my favorite on here. <clears throat> but I mean, just some great guitar playing. Um, Betrayed is good. Rise to it, I love. Uh, it's really a thick tape, as you can see there. Uh, but uh, anyway, Hot in the Shade, pretty good. Then we've got Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits. We've got a couple of new songs on here. Let's put the X and Sex, and um, You Make Me Rock Hard. And the rest of them are kind of like new remixes, or at least some remixes. So I, I thought it was a neat comp. Uh, you know, I like the two new tracks. Crazy Nights, the one people say is Kiss's worst album. I disagree. I, I'm i a fan of, of this album. I think it's a good pop record. Um, 
Crazy Crazy Nights, the title song. Hell or High Water is one of my favorites. Uh, Turn on the Night, uh, Reason to Live, My Way. Uh, I think it's a good album. You know, people can say what they want to about it. Then we have Asylum. This is one of my favorite Kiss albums right here. Uh, I listen to this thing front to back. Uh, Any Way You Slice It is just one of my favorite, favorite tracks. Trial by Fire, uh, Secretly Cruel is on here, Tears Are Falling. And here's one that a lot of people overlook, Radar for Love. I just think that that is just an amazing like uh, metal track. But uh, All Night, I mean, I rock to that. Um, you know, in the 80s, man, this was just, you know, one of the tapes to listen to back then. Uh, then we've got Animal Eyes. I'm not as big on Animal Eyes as I am on Asylum. But I do like Heaven's on Fire, uh, Get All You Can Take, Lonely as a Hunter. That's one of my favorite underestimated tracks that people kind of overlook. Thrills in the Night. I don't really care for uh, Under the Gun or While the City Sleeps or Murder in High Heels. But, uh, you know, it's a good Kiss album. Now, here's my favorite non-makeup, uh, Lick It Up. You know, Kiss came out on uh, MTV, and, you know, they were showing their new video for uh, Lick It Up. And, you know, not, not For the Innocent is actually one of my favorites on here. And then, of course, the very underrated, and on the eighth day, uh, Paul lets out an amazing vocal on A Million to One. All Hell's Breaking Loose is one of my favorite Kiss tracks of all time. You know, I'm not just a 70s Kiss fan. I like 80s Kiss um, because that's what I grew up with. I didn't grow up with the 70s Kiss. Uh, that was before my time. But granted, the 70s Kiss is amazing. But for me, the 80s stuff is just phenomenal. And here's my favorite Kiss album of all time. It's Creatures of the Night. It has amazing artwork. I mean, I just love the blue. And this is basically their back in black. Uh, every song on here is good. Creatures of the Night, Saint and Sinner, Keep Me Coming, Rock and Roll Hell, Danger, I Love It Loud, I Still Love You, their greatest ballad ever, in my opinion, Killer and uh, the Amazing War Machine. I Love It Loud is my favorite Kiss track of all time, by the way. So, uh, you know, Creatures of the Night, I can't say enough about that. Uh, the reason I have another one in here is because I got the alternate artwork uh, that they come out with after that. I think they changed the order and uh, a couple of the mixes on there too. So, but I, the original is the one that that you need to get. This is just nice to have as a collectible. Uh, then we have music from the elder, which you know I'm not a fan of. I'll just go ahead and admit that. Um, I try to get what I can out of it, but uh, you know I, I'm just not a huge fan of this. Uh, it was Kiss's big experiment, but a lot of people like it. Uh, then we've got Unmasked. This is a reissue because it's in the clear. Uh, Unmasked is a different kind of album. I think it's pretty good. Uh, She's So European. Uh, yeah, Naked City's pretty good. Talk to Me. A lot of people like Shandy, you know. So, anyway, not huge into Unmasked. It's pretty good. Now... Dynasty, I really think, is underrated, and people just kind of knock it off because it's from the disco era, but uh, I think it's a great rock album. I love the cover, the faces. Uh, I like the uh, full vinyl because it shows them really up close, but I like almost every song on here, to be honest with you, on this album. Dirty Living, uh, Charisma, uh, X-Ray Eyes, Hard Times. I like the demo of Hard Times. Dynasty's underrated. It's a great album. Then we get into some solos here. Paul Stanley. Uh, it's the second best solo album behind Aces, but uh, Tonight You Belong to Me. Uh, I really like It's All Right. I, I think it's great, but I think Paul did a ph phenomenal job on it. Uh, just not as good as Aces' album. Aces' album, front to back, is one of the greatest Kiss albums of all time. I, that's just my opinion. Uh, every song on here is good. Uh, you know, it's Ace, man. What can you say? Rip it out. Speeding back to my baby. How many times have you had that stuck in your head? Just phenomenal album. And then we have Double Platinum, which is really the first Kiss album that I ever heard. Uh, 
my sister had bought that on vinyl. This is volume one and two. I don't know if they have a single volume of this or not, but uh, a lot of the mixes are different on here. Strutter from one. And some of the mixes I like better than the original release versions that are on this. Uh, then we have Kiss Alive 2, which is a phenomenal live record. It just doesn't top the original Kiss Alive. Again, it's on two volumes, so I'm not sure if it come out with one volume. But uh, I like the extra studio tracks they added on here. Uh, Rocket Ride and All American Man. Both of those are phenomenal. So it's a great record. It's a great live album, and it's a must-own for a Kiss fan. But uh, not as good as the original Alive. Uh, then we got Dress to Kill, not the greatest album cover, but, you know, it's the shortest Kiss album, but I think it's just phenomenal. I think, uh, you know, I kind of like every track on here, Rock Bottom, uh, Two Timer, uh, Come On and Love Me, She, I'm a huge fan of. I remember I didn't like She at first, but then it just kind of just really blew me away and grew on me, but I really like She. I think it's amazing. Uh, then we've got uh, Kiss Alive. This is the uh, remastered version. And it is on one cassette, and, you know, I'm happy to get this. I got it for, like, really cheap, $4. Uh, it's in mint condition, too. So, you know, a lot of people consider this the greatest Kiss album of all time. I have a hard time disputing that. I mean, it really is what broke Kiss into the big time. And, you know, I mean, when you're talking about iconic Kiss albums, this is just at the top of the list. Uh, another Kiss album that's at the top of the list is the original, and this is a greatest hits album in my opinion. Uh, front to back, you can listen to it. I don't care for Love Theme from Kiss, but every other song is like a greatest hits. Uh, this is a reissue, but uh, you know, like like I said, I'm I'm working on my Kiss coll cassette collection. I don't have all that I want, I'm missing many of them as you can see, but. Uh, you know, I've got quite a few good ones, and so, anyway, it's something that's growing, and, you know, I'm looking for all the time. But let's continue on with Rat and Detonator. Probably my favorite Rat album, uh, just front to back. You know, I like just about every song on here. And, you know, I'm not going to name them all, but this is a phenomenal Rat record. I'm a huge fan of Rat all the way around anyway. Reach for the Sky. Again, uh, kind of a letdown from Dancing Undercover because I thought Dancing Undercover, that and Detonator are probably their two best, but uh, there's not a bad track on the, on Dancing Undercover. And, uh, you know, it's just a phenomenal album. Uh, Invasion of Your Privacy. Uh, it's kind of like a different alternate cover than what we're seeing on the CD and vinyl, but again, this is a phenomenal record right here. And I don't think there's a bad song on here. To be quite honest, I think I like every one of them. So, you know, again, an amazing ride album. Uh, then we've got Out of the Cellar. Uh, that's the one people are most familiar with. And, you know, because it, it had Round and Round on it. But, you know, there's some other fantastic tracks on here. I mean, you got to listen to the whole thing. But again, it's a phenomenal record. Uh, I really like the cover art on that. Uh, then we have the Rat EP. Um... Uh, surprisingly it's good i mean uh, it's kind of hard to find on cassette i think but uh i actually found a couple of them but uh anyway it's good to have the ep so i got a couple of rat albums i'd like to get on cassette but anyway that's these are the ones i have in my collection so we're going to close this up and flip over and we'll do uh side two of this here next all right everyone we're going to continue with tape case one we're just flipped it over so let's get right into it and we've got some ACDC and some Def Leppard in here primarily. And we're just going to start off with ACDC, Power Up, their new album. It's phenomenal. I have it on vinyl and CD. And basically, I like every track on this thing. Uh, this is a limited edition. Mine's the gray one. I think they had yellow and red, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, what an album to come out with in 2020. Um, you know, with all the pop music that's around these days for for ACDC to come out with a rocking album like this. I'm just so glad we got that. Uh, then we're going to move down here to Stiff Upper Lip. More like a blues ACDC record here. Uh, it's it's great. I mean, the, the title track, Can't Stop Rock and Roll, Satellite Blues. 
Uh, I like it. I mean, uh, there's there's not a bad ACDC album out there, except maybe for uh, Blow Up Your Video, which I don't really care for. But here's Ball Breaker, um, Hard as a Rock, Cover You in Oil. Uh, again, great ACDC album. Here's ACDC Live. This is just on one cassette. Uh, I think there's a version with two cassettes out there, so I'm glad I've got the one. Uh, here's the Razor's Edge. A lot of people considered this an ACDC comeback album because of Blow Up Your Video, you know, wasn't that great and neither was uh, Fly on the Wall, but uh, it is a phenomenal record. I really am a fan of the Razor's Edge. And even they don't, even though they don't have their regular drummer, I thought he did a phenomenal job and Thunderstruck, you know, is kind of like a signature song for them now, even on, when they play live. And here's the uh, Blow Up Your Video, which I consider the, the worst ACDC album. Uh, there's not much redeeming on this album that I like. That's just, you know, just my opinion. Uh, then we've got Who Made Who, which is more of a, I like the title track, you know, that's the new one. The rest of them are all just, uh, you know, previous releases. So, and then we have Fly on the Wall, which my favorite track on here is First Blood, because that kind of sounds more like ACDC than any other track on here. Uh, the production on Brian's voice is crappy on this. The guitar playing of Angus is amazing. And the riffs they've come up with on these things. And, uh, you know, Shake Your Foundation, Sink the Pink, Fly on the Wall. All of them are great, but it's just Brian's vocals. And really, the only one I hear it coming out on is First Blood. I mean, can anybody else tell me if I'm wrong? Uh, here we go. Flick of the Switch, one of the most underrated ACDC albums. I would have liked to have heard what this would have sounded like if Mutt would have stayed on to produce it. I think it would have been even more rocking and powerful and did even better than it did. But every track on here is good, and I'm a fan of every single track on here, front to back. Guns for Hire, Rising Power, Flick of the Switch, Nervous Shakedown, Bedlam in Belgium. I mean, uh, to me, I can listen to this album from front to back, no problem. Uh, for those about to rock, uh, it doesn't get the credit it deserves because it follows back in black. But to me, every song on here is phenomenal. And my favorite is Inject the Venom. Oh, I love Inject the Venom. Uh, COD, Evil Walks, uh, you know, I Put the Finger on You, Night of the Long Knives. People say, oh, it's just left over back in black tracks. Hogwash. They wrote these songs. They're phenomenal. The production on them is amazing. This is one of my favorite ACDC records. No doubt. Then we have Back in Black. You know, what can I say about Black in Black? It's, it's, it's iconic. It's the greatest ACDC album ever. Uh, it's front to back. Every song's phenomenal. It's just people have heard it over and over. So I but you got to appreciate this album for what it is and, and how they made it. It's just, you know, the greatest hard rock album of all time. And uh, here's a record store day release. This is just a collectible item, uh, you know, that I bought, uh, you know, whenever it came out. So nice to have in the collection. I don't have, uh, you know, Highway to Hell. I wish I did. But, you know, anyway, Power Age I have, and it's phenomenal. A lot of people consider Power Age one of the greatest ACDC records of all time, and I have a hard time disputing that as well. Uh, this is a great, great album, and every song on here rocks. Um, bon Scott is amazing. Uh, just so sad we lost him the way we did. Uh, Let There Be Rock, I love this album as well. It's more guitar-driven, and, you know, the title track, Let There Be Rock, it may be my favorite ACDC song of all time. You just listen to that track. I mean, you want to know what rock and roll is? Listen to the, to the track, Let There Be Rock. Seriously. Uh, then we have Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Uh, again, great record here. The title track, Problem Child. Uh, the great tunes on there. Then we have High Voltage, uh, you know, 70s rock. Uh, it's a long way to the top. It's got some bagpipes going on, but uh, 
Again, phenomenal record. Then we've got 74 Jailbreak. I think this was actually released in 84. Um, but it's got Jailbreak, the title track on it, which is good. So anyway, it's just, you know, a nice EP to have. Uh, then I got some L.A. Guns, Hollywood Vampires. Uh, very underrated record there, you know. Grunge had took over by that time, but, you know, anyway, it's a good album. Cocked and Loaded. I think this is probably my favorite L.A. Guns album, over the, even over the first one. So, anyway, there's the first one right here. I've got all these on CD, too. Uh, Rock, Rock Candy Records has, re has released that one. I have that one. I think I have the second one, too, but anyway. Uh, Def Leppard, uh, my favorite group of all time. And I did order Diamond Star Halos on red cassette, so it will be coming at the end of May. But anyway, let's just start off this one with Euphoria. Uh, Mutt Lang returned, co-wrote a couple of songs. Uh, I think Promises, you know, he wrote and uh, or co-wrote. But I like Guilty, Paper Sun. Uh, I think that's a good album. It's a good return for them from what slang was. And I'm not saying slang is bad. I actually love slang. It's just, it's a different kind of, of uh, Def Leppard record. And, you know, I really like the deluxe edition they came out with on CD. Because you can get really get a full taste of, uh, you know, what they were doing during that time. But it was a dark time for Def during that time. And, you know, but I'm a fan of slang. I get in the mood to listen to it quite often. Uh, Vault, they come out with a couple of new tracks on here and put some other greatest hits. And they did that big Vault World Tour where they went to all the different countries. It was kind of cool. Uh, Retroactive is more of like a, a B-Sides uh, comp than it is a new album. But it, um, it has one of my favorite underrated Def Leppard songs on here, Fractured Love. Uh, I just love that track. Uh, it's one of their best, in my opinion. Uh, then we have Adrenalize, which, you know, yeah, it sounds like leftover hysteria tracks, but it's still amazing. And, of course, they had to, you know, do in Steve's parts, uh, you know, uh, Steve Clark's parts because he passed away. But, uh, you know, they dedicated White Lightning to Steve, and I think that's one of the most uh, highly rated tracks on here, in my opinion. Uh, but I like the whole thing. Tear It Down's good, but not as good as the original version. Uh, Hysteria, the classic Hysteria. Yeah, sure, it's pop, but it's amazing. And Mutt Lang and the guys, they really poured it on. Um, so glad we got Pour Some Sugar tacked on, you know, because we weren't going to get that. But, you know, Love and Affection is actually one of my favorite tracks on here. Uh, then we have Pyromania, which uh, is probably the best hard rock Def Leppard album. Uh, every track on here is phenomenal. It kicks off with Rock Rock Till You Drop, which just right in your face rock. Rock of Ages is a classic uh, fooling photograph. Uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing act, uh, album. And I like Action Not Words. And I also like Coming Under Fire. Uh, I think that's the only track they've ever, not ever did live. It's an amazing track, though. Wish they would have done that live at least once. Uh, High and Dry, another awesome hard rock Def Leppard album. Uh, again, uh, just about every song on here is good. Uh, you know, uh, I really like uh, Lady Strange. I think it's great. Mirror, Mirror. Yeah, that's great, too. Then we've got On Through the Night, where Joe sounds a lot different. He didn't really get his signature sound until Muck come along and kind of taught him to sing. Uh, well, sing a certain way. But Rock Brigade, Rock Brigade, if I can even say it right. Hello America. Uh, it's a good album. Uh, I love the cover on it. Look at that. One of the greatest covers, you know. The transfer truck with the guitar. And then we have Guns N' Roses, the classic Appetite for Destruction. Uh, it's all my Guns N' Roses album I have, but it's the one to have. Welcome to the Jungle, you know, is on here. Paradise City. Uh, it's just a great album. And, you know, it was, it was the one that started off Guns N' Roses down that path of glory to their stardom. But anyway, that completes the first tape case. So we're going to put it up. 
and then we're going to move on to tape case number two. All right, we're going to move on to uh, tape case number two here. Let's just get this thing out. And of course, it's going to be more hard rock. And we're going to start off with quite a few different bands. But uh, Motley Crue here, uh, first one up, New Tattoo. I actually just picked this up at my local record store for $2.50. I think it's an underrated Motley Crue album. I really like it. Uh, I don't like Saints of Los Angeles, but I do like that one. Uh, then we've got Motley Crue's Decade of Decadence. Uh, got Primal Scream on there. Awesome song right there. Glad to pick that up. Then we got Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. A lot of people knock this one, but the production on it and all the songs to me sound amazing. Uh, Tommy's drum work on that is phenomenal. I, I think it's one of the crew's best albums. Uh, Girls, 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 again, I'm a huge fan of this one. I mean, for me, Motley Crue just, you know, really hit the right tone here in 88 and 89. I was a huge fan. Uh, Theater of Pain, you know, I like smoking in the boys' room, but uh, not much else on this one. And uh, Shout at the Devil, uh, I wasn't a huge fan when this one came out. Uh, I do like, what was it that I really, really like? Is it Danger? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the last track on side two, Danger, is probably my favorite song on there. Uh, then we've got uh, the debut album, Too Fast for Love, Motley Crue. Of course, Live Wire is the one that hit them big on this one. And I like the song. It's a uh, up-paced, really good rock. Uh, then we've got uh, Vince Neil's Exposed, which I liked better than the uh, regular Motley Crue release from the same year with a different singer. Just, just my preference. Uh, Warrant, Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinking, Rich. I actually said the title right, so what do you know? But anyway, great album there all the way around. Uh, Warrants. Uh, Cherry Pie, you know, of course, from the title track, and that kind of song got kind of just tied to them. But this whole album's good. Uncle Tom's Cabin's amazing. Uh, just give it a shot. I mean, don't just listen to Cherry Pie. Then we got uh, some Crocus coming in. Uh, Heart Attack, uh, they kind of went more pop on that record, which I didn't really think it was that great. Uh, change of Address, same thing. Uh, more pop style oriented rock. Now these, starting with the Blitz Down, is Crocus's best albums, and uh, you know I I really like them all. I, at the time they were a little bit too much metal for me. Headhunter's really really metal, so I'm still not a huge fan of the, of Headhunter. But now One Vice at a Time and Hardware, the next two, I think are all great. They kind of sound like an ACDC on them to me, and I uh, I really like them. Here's Hardware. Nice orange Arista cases, I, you know, all matching here. <clears throat> then we're going to get into some Scorpions. Uh, Crazy World. Uh, I like Crazy World. I like just about any album the Scorpions come out with anyway. Tease Me, Please Me. Awesome song. Here's my favorite Scorpions album, Savage Amusement. I can listen to every song on here. Um, Don't Stop at the Top. Uh... I mean, you, you just got a passion rules the game. I, I love the album. Blackout, it's also one of my favorites, I have to admit that. And a lot of people consider this their very, very best. And you know, I, I have a hard time, you know, disputing that it's not. I really love Blackout. I think this is one of the greatest rock albums of all time. And uh, then we got Love Drive in the... Uh, little brown polygram case there. I'm going to get over here to some poison. Crack a smile. I actually paid 10 bucks for this, but uh, it's pretty rare. And basically any release from 2000, 2001 on cassettes kind of rare because they were really limiting the production at that time because, you know, cassettes weren't selling. So, you know, they're pretty rare these days for cassettes in, in the 2000, 2001 era. Okay, now we've got Native Tongue. Again, kind of their uh, grunge album, I guess. Uh, but I like it. I think it's really, really good. 
Um, there's several good tracks on here. Give this one a try if you haven't. If you just heard the original Poison, give Native Tongue a shot. Uh, Flesh and Blood, I'm a huge fan of this one. Uh, Valley of Lost Souls is probably my favorite song on there. And then here's the classic Open Up and Say Ah, the original cover, you know, not the band one that uh, covered up the half the, almost all the cover, but front to back, I can listen to it. I got the vinyl of that. Look what the cat dragged in. Again, I can listen to this one front to back as well. I mean, I'm just, they were just signature albums for me growing up. And now we're going to get into some Dokken. And this is Don Dokken, Up From The Ashes. And this was after the group split up. And, you know, this just sounds like another Dokken album. The people that uh, Don had got, they play just like the other guys did. So, I mean, I can't really tell the difference. So, sounds like a Dokken album to me. Here is probably my favorite hard rock album of all time. It's right up there with ACDC's Black, Back in Black and, you know, several other iconic type of albums, you know, Blackout by the Scorpions, but uh, every song on here. Uh, Prisoner, Kiss of Death. Have you ever heard Kiss of Death? Give that a shot, man. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Every song on there is amazing. It's just a phenomenal hard rock album. Under Lock and Key. I'm going to speed up here a little bit because I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, Tooth and Nail. These are back to the white cases. Or the white tapes. And uh, Dawkins Breaking the Chains. Again, all these Dawkins albums are, are fantastic. I, I love all the Dawkins albums. I'm going to flip to side two here of uh, tape case number two. And in here we're going to have primarily Van Halen and ZZ Top. I think that's about it with just some David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar mixed in. We're going to try to get through these pretty quick, but we've got Balance, not one of my favorite uh, Van Halen records. A lot of people say it's Hagar's best, but I don't think so. Then we've got their live album uh, right here, right now. It's a two uh, cassette set, and I got this for a really good deal. You know, I'm not usually into live albums. I think this one's pretty good. So, moving on uh, for unlawful carnal knowledge. Again, I'm kind of a big fan of some of the songs on here. Right now, Top of the World. Uh, these two are, are Sammy's best, in my opinion. OU812 and 5150. I guess it's just the time period they released and when I was a fan of the, of the hard rock genre. And it was this time, so, you know, I mean, they were just awesome. I mean, I can listen to these records front to back. Love the artwork on that one. I think it's great. Well, then we're going to get into the classic Van Halen here with David Lee Roth. This is actually what's called a super cassette, and these were uh, supposedly higher quality tapes. This is on a black tape. And they do sound amazing. I've got a couple of them in my collection, but I got this for really cheap. Uh, I thought they kind of skimped on the cover art, and that I like this cover art so much better, you know, where it fills up the whole thing. And so that's why I kept both of them. I just wanted to have both of them in the collection. And you can't go wrong with this album, because, again, this is right up there with the greatest of all time in terms of hard rock albums. Uh, Diver Down. And we're going to go into Fair Warning. Different kind of Van Halen album there. I wasn't a fan at first, but it's kind of grown on me. Women and Children First. This was a great rocking album, you know. And The Cradle of Rock. I mean, that's one of my favorites. Uh, Van Halen 2. Not up to the uh, original, but still a great album. Uh, here's a classic. I mean, it's as classic as they get. I think this thing sold 10 million copies. I got the vinyl of this as well, but front to back, it's one of the best debut albums ever for any genre of music. And it's just one of those go-to albums that you can put in anytime. I listen to it all the time. Now we're going to get into some David Lee Roth, uh, Skyscraper. 
And then we're going to go to Eat Em and Smile. I think there's some good guitar playing on this record. Uh, Stevie Vile, so I think it was who was playing guitar for him on that. Great album. Uh, this one sold quite a bit for an EP, Crazy from the Heat. That's just because of, uh, you know, he was coming off of Van Halen, kind of riding the coattails. So it sold quite a, quite a few copies. This uh, Sammy Hagar, Red Voodoo. I normally probably wouldn't have bought it, but it came with like a, a lot that I bought off of eBay, so I ended up with it. Uh, then we've got Sammy Hagar, Turn Up the Music. It's kind of a, a compilation album. And then here's an album produced by Eddie Van Halen, and it's phenomenal. It's, a, it's basically another Van Halen record, in my opinion, but I mean, it's got Give to Live on it, When the Hammer Falls. There's great songs on that. I mean, it's... Uh, Probably my favorite Sammy Hagar album, other than Standing Hampton, I think. Here's VOA. I got it in the clear, which, uh, you know, the white one I had didn't play properly. But anyway, this one plays perfect. I can't drive 55s on that. Three Lock Box. Now, I, I really enjoy Three Lock Box. Uh, you know, it's, it's right up there with Sammy's best solo albums. And here's Standing Hampton. I think it's probably his best. There's only one way to rock. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? That's a great, great rock song. You know, you got to give that a shot if you haven't heard it. Uh, ZZ Top now. We got the greatest hits. And a nice clear there. And the very underrated ZZ Top Antenna, which I like every song on here. I think it's a great, great ZZ Top album. Kind of the departure from, you know, what they were doing. And, you know, it, it just works for me. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, Breakaway, I mean, Cherry Red, co Cover Your Rig, uh, World of Swirl. I can just keep going on. Great album. Uh, Recycler, uh, pretty good follow-up to Afterburner. Not as good as Afterburner, in my opinion. Uh, then we have Afterburner, which, uh, you know, great follow-up to Eliminator. More pop-oriented. The Sleeping Bag Remix, it's not on here, but it's one of my favorite remixes of all time. But I can listen to this front to back. Dipping Low in the Lap of Luxury is one of my favorite tracks on there. Here's one of those you have to put up there with the greatest hard rock albums of all time. And our rock albums, period. The Eliminator, uh, really a special album, means a lot to me. Front to back, I listen to this. I have the uh, limited edition red vinyl. But I mean, this is just... Uh, you know, it's it's the greatest ZZ Top album of all time, in my opinion. Uh, El Loco, uh, not a very good ZZ Top album, in my opinion. Uh, I don't listen to that very much at all. Then we've got Fandango. I really like Fandango in terms of the... I like a lot of the 70s uh, ZZ Top, but just not as much as the 80s. It's just the time period that I grew up. You know, I grew up with the 80s ZZ Top. Uh, then One Foot in the Blues, pretty good pretty good cassette there, so that concludes the second tape case. So now, I'm going to move on to tape case number three next, so I'll be right back for that. Alright, let's get out our next tape case, number three. Open it up and start going over all the tapes. This will be uh, side one of tape case number three. Of course, more hard rock in here. Got a lot of different bands. Gonna get right into it with Bon Jovi, Crossroads. More like a uh, greatest hits type of album. Uh, bon Jovi, Keep the Faith. I'm not huge into this one. Uh, I know a lot of people are. And we've got uh, New Jersey, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of New Jersey. Of course, anything from New Jersey all the way through to the debut is uh, kind of like the Bon Jovi that I like to hear. So, uh, you know, I know some people say, oh, this is just a pop record. Well, it's, it's a good pop record. <laughs> uh, we've got the classic Slippery When Wet. I consider this one of the top hard rock albums of all times. It just... Uh, it's iconic. It's, um, you know, it means something when you're talking about Slippery When Wet. Uh, you Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, Wanted Dead or Alive. So many groups have emulated those songs. 
but uh, this is just a classic album. I have it on vinyl, and uh, you know it's 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 one of the best ones. Uh, 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're in back into the cream colored cases. Uh, I love In and Out of Love. Uh, probably my favorite on there. And then, of course, we have the uh, Bon Jovi self-titled debut. Uh, has the track on it, uh, Runaway. That's the one that uh, got Bon Jovi started. And then we have uh, the Young Guns 2 soundtrack. Of course, Blaze of Glory's on here. And... Uh, you know, it's just really, really uh, a good song. I mean, top notch. Um, then we got Winger, Heart of the Young. Uh, Winger, to me, was kind of like a Def Leppard wannabe. I think on this one here, uh, there's a song, uh, Can't Get Enough, and it sounds just like Pour Some Sugar on Me. <laughs> uh, then we have Winger, the uh, self-titled... Uh, going to find 17 on here that's probably the most well-known song on here a little more obscure group here danger danger i didn't discover them till later on i didn't didn't even know them at the time uh when was this year 89 maybe but it has naughty naughty on it and uh you know i really like danger danger there's uh some other albums i want to get of theirs that come out after that that are really good the one that's got monkey business on it need to get that uh, then we've got uh, White Line, Main Attraction. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite albums of theirs. Uh, even over, you know, some of the more well-known ones. And uh, if you haven't heard Main Attraction, you need to give it a shot. Uh, Big Game, I think it was a letdown for me in terms of uh, what Pride was. So, you know, a lot of people, they really like this album but uh I, i'm not saying i don't like it i like it it's just you know compared to pride right here which had hungry and uh weight uh it's just a such a such a better album now for me this right here this and main attraction this is uh fight to survive and this is the debut album and i like every song on here I think this could probably be the, considered their best album as well. It's different than all three of the rest of these, but it's amazing. So give Fight to Survive a shot. And we're going to get into some Fast Way, Bad Bad Girls. Uh, this is my favorite album of, of, uh, of theirs. I think it's the hardest rocking one anyway. Uh, these two right here kind of sound like Survivor, if, if you know what I mean. Not really the... the it's some hard rock. It's just not as much as uh, Bad Bad Girls. And then here's the self-title, Fast, Fast Way. Uh, then we're going to get into some Firehouse, uh, Hold Your Fire, and Clear. Um, big one on here, When I Look Into Your Eyes. That's my wife and I's song together when we were dating. So, you know, that one means a lot. We've got Firehouse right here, a good rocking album right here. Uh, probably even more harder than the uh, than the follow up Hold Your Fire. Then we've got Brittany Fox, uh, another obscure kind of group, but good group. Uh, not as good as Danger Danger, but it's got Girl School on it. And uh, there's some other albums of theirs that I'd like to get that uh, I don't have in the collection. I'm gonna move on here to Twisted Sister. Love is for Suckers. Uh, everybody knows what Twisted Sister is about. And, uh, you know, this is a different kind of case. Look how it's got the uh, WEA and the and the lines across it. Kind of neat how that is. Then we've got uh, Twisted Sister, Under the Blade. Pretty good album there from Twisted. And then we've got Stay Hungry. Uh, probably their most well-known. I think there's been some special editions of this. I Want to Rock's on there, of course, so, you know, it's, it's a really popular album. Uh, now we're going to get into Cinderella, and, you know, Cinderella's sound changed. It started out wanting to be like a hard rock hair metal band, and then they slowly went to the kind of like the blues rock, which is what Heartbreak Station is, and it's an amazing album. Uh, front to back, I love it. Uh, it's got Shelter Me on there, one of my favorites. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, if you like blues rock, get this album. Then we've got Long Cold Winter, which 
Uh, another amazing Cinderella album on there as well, Gypsy Road. Uh, <laughs> just just incredible song there. I love it. And Night Songs, you know, here it is, trying to be Motley Crue. Though you can see the look, you know. Uh, but you know what? I love the album. Night Songs, Shake Me, Nobody's Fool, uh, <laughs> Somebody Save Me. Uh, all these are great, great 80s rock songs. I mean, just a must own. I, I, I listened to that over and over back in the day. And here we're going to have some Helix, uh, A Long Way to Heaven. Uh, they really weren't that popular in terms of other uh, hair metal bands. But, you know, I kind of like their sound. It's kind of different. Um Here's No Rest for the Wicked. Uh, I don't have Walking the Razor's Edge. That's the one I want the most because it's got Gimme, Gimme, Gimme Good Lovin' on it because um, that's kind of my favorite Helix song. You know, they put out a really risque video for that, by the way. You need to check that out if you haven't. Uh, Faster Pussycat, Whipped. Uh, pretty good album there. Uh, and then Faster Pussycat, Wake Me When It's Over. I don't have their debut on cassette. I've got it on a rock candy CD, and it's awesome. I think the debut is the best. Um, it, it's it's they're basically sound a lot like Poison, and I think it was produced by the guy that did Poison. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But anyway, let's flip over here to the uh, next side of tape case number three. Let's see what we got. It's going to be even more hard rock. And here's one of my favorite bands, Kicks. Uh, Hot Wire, probably my favorite album of Kicks. Um, uh, man, every song on here, Hot Wire, Girl, Girl Money, Tear Down the Walls is an awesome ballad, uh, Same Jane, uh, Liar Liar Pants on Fire, this is a rockin' album, Kicks is just a fun, hard rock group, uh, here's Blow My Fuse, more great rock songs on here, Get It While It's Hot, Cold Blood, uh, I can just go on and on with the kicks. Uh, here's Midnight Dynamite, which never got pushed the way it should. Uh, awesome album. Uh, Scarlet Fever, uh, uh, Red Hot, Black and Blue. I mean, there's just tons of great songs on here, and this album should have been pushed more by the label, and they didn't. And here's Kicks' as Cool Kids. This They'll admit to you they just did this for the studio. Uh, you know, I like Love Pollution. Uh but it's not near as good as these three. Get these three Kicks albums. Uh, here we got Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance. I'm not a huge Priest fan. You know, they were a little bit too metal for me. But, you know, I got these for like a dollar, so I couldn't turn them down. Uh, Defenders of the Face. They're, they're in a different kind of, of case, too. It's got the CBS logo in the middle, which is kind of different. This one's got some heads are going to roll and some different things on there. But uh, more Judas Priest. Not like I said, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, Trickster, this is one of those obscure groups that you didn't hear much about either in the 80s that, you know, I discovered later on. But they're a great, great, great band. Uh, this one's called Here. And then they've got a self-titled album, which is amazing. Uh, tons of great songs on there. I forget it. It might have Rockin' Horse on it. I remember really liking that song. Then we have Slaughter, which, uh, you know, they've got some ACDC influences going on. Other hard rock bands, they you can tell they've been influenced by. This is The Wildlife. And then here's the one that's the most popular, Stick It To You. Uh, I like this album front to back, to be quite honest. I think it's great. Great cover art. Uh, it's got one of those flip covers. And anyway, if you haven't heard Slaughter, I mean, a lot of people knock Slaughter because they think, oh, they just ripped everybody off. But I disagree. I think I just think they're an amazing band. I love Slaughter. Uh, then we got Aerosmith, uh, Nine Lives. Not huge into this album. Uh, basically, I got this for like major cheap. That's why I have it. Now, starting with Get a Grip, Pump, and Permanent Vacation. That was my time for really discovering Aerosmith. You know, because I wasn't a 70s guy. You know, I'm an 80s guy. So, you know, Get a Grip, uh, great, great album. Uh, I think these fit together so good as a trilogy. And it's got Crazy on it, some other great tracks. Then we've got Punk, 
uh, nice cover art on that. Uh, you're going to have Love and an Elevator on there. Uh, just another great album from Aerosmith for that time. And then here's my favorite Aerosmith of all time, Permanent Vacation. I can listen to this front to back. Every song is fantastic. It was their comeback album in a sense that they were clean for the first time, but I like every song on here, and uh, there's not one song that I don't like, and the album just flows so well, and uh, just really love it. Here's Aerosmith's Greatest greatest Hits. I picked this up at a gas station back in the day, but it's got you know a lot of the original stuff like Sweet Emotion and Same Old Song and Dance and Back in the Saddle and all their great early stuff. And then uh, here's Toys in the Attic. Uh, a lot of people consider this one of their greatest albums. Uh, again, it's got a lot of good songs, Sweet Emotion on there. But anyway, like I said, I'm an 80s Aerosmith fan. Now we're going to get into some Quiet Riot. Uh, here's uh, QR3. And to me, it's underestimated. People really didn't give this album a chance after Condition Critical because they considered it such a letdown from Metal Health. But this is a great album. And I'm a huge fan of it. I just think it's a great album. Uh, rocks. And you know what? People not condition critical, and I like it. <laughs> you know, call me crazy, but I really do like it. And, uh, you know, I won't go over every song on there, but it's good. Trust me, if you like it quite right. Here's the classic Metal Health that changed metal. Uh, came out in 83, but Metal Health, come on, feel the noise. You know, you know the good ones on there. And then here's Metallica. I never was huge into Metallica. This is the reissue. But it's got Inner Sandman, which is an amazing song. And, I, you know, some of the rest of it I don't really care about. I just ended up getting that just because, it, you know, if you've got a hard rock collection, you need Metallica, the Black Album, in there. And up next we've got Foreigner. And you can see... That I've added a lot of Foreigner to my collection since the last video. And here is the very best and beyond. Uh, inside information, which a lot of people don't really consider that that great in a, a Foreigner album. Uh, Agent Provocateur. I want to know what love is, of course, is on here. And uh, here we have Foreigner Records. Which, you know, sold a lot of copies because it had a, a lot of great, great hits on it. And I remember having that on vinyl back in the day. Uh, here's the classic 4 or 4 produced by Mutt Lang. So it's it's going to be classic. And Jukebox Hero, Waiting for a Girl Like You, Urgent. Just a classic, classic 4 album right there. Probably their greatest. Then we've got Foreigner's Head Games. Again, Dirty White Boy. Got some other great songs. Uh, here's a classic, you know, that I had back on vinyl in the day, too, uh, Double Vision. And that song right there was just, I just listened to that over and over. I really loved the Double Vision. And here we've got the debut, Foreigner, Feels Like the First Time, Cold as Ice. It's classic. Uh, you know, so Foreigner, one of the greatest rock bands of all time. I don't really consider them hard, hard rock. And then we've got Lou Graham's Ready or Not. Uh, that's after he went solo. It's amazing. I like every track on here. And uh, Ready or Not, Midnight Blue. But this is a great album. Uh, could have been a Foreigner album as far as I'm concerned. And then we've got Vinnie Vincent's Invasion. You know you know about Vinnie Vincent playing for Kiss. He, great guitar player. Not that great of a singer, but great guitar player. And so, anyway, that concludes this tape case so we're making good progress and we're going to go on to tape case number four which is a 30 case so uh, we'll be back for that all right we're going to continue on with the tape case collection uh, this is number four in line the 30 over here but it's soundtrack so I'm just going to continue on in the hard rock vein or rock vein and pull this as tape case number four so let's just get into side one of this. And we're going to start off here with Bruce Springsteen's Greatest Hits. Uh, pretty good album there. Tunnel of Love. Uh, classic Bruce there. Then we've got the uh, three cassette live album, which I have the uh, box set and the booklet that came with it. 
but this was really a huge uh, album back in the day because um, it followed Born in the USA and just like the fever for it was huge. I mean, I got this at Walmart for, I don't remember, 20, 29 bucks maybe. But, uh, you know, this that it was a huge live album that was released by Bruce, but just simply because of what it followed, which was this right here, Born in the USA, one of the top albums of all time in my opinion it would be in my top 10 uh i can listen to every song on here uh, from start to finish uh it's just classic to me uh it's bruce being more commercial and you know it's what i it, it's the ultimate bruce springsteen album to me it's one of my favorite of all time then we have born to run which has the uh title song on here which is great then we get into some boston we got third stage uh i'm a huge boston fan this has got amanda on it and a couple of others uh not as good as their 70s releases but it's still good uh, don't look back the follow-up to the classic self-titled and it's kind of a sequel to it you know don't look back's on their party it's got some good rocking tunes on it just not near as good as the classic first one. Here's another one of those albums that I would rate in the top 10 of all time. Uh, just a Boston self-titled front to back. You're not going to find a better rock album. It was uh, huge in that it was, you know, a different kind of rock album during that time. Look, at the cover's just fantastic, too, on this thing. But it's a, it's a classic. It's iconic. It's a must-own for anybody's collection. Uh, I'm big into Rick Springfield, uh, so I, I have all his albums just about. Uh, Rock of Life. I got a lot of the, almost all the Rock Candy releases of, of Springfield. Teo. I think this is underrated myself. Great, great album. Celebrate Youth's on there, I think. Uh, several other great, great songs. Hard to Hold, the soundtrack. I have the movie. Movie's okay. Uh, the album's got a lot of good songs on it. Love Somebody is on there. Here is my favorite Bruce Springsteen album of all, of all time. One of the first cassettes I ever bought. Uh, Living in Oz. I can listen to this front to back. I really don't care for Like Father, Like Son, but everything else on there, Simply Amazing, Affair of the Heart, Human Touch, uh, Souls. I mean, it's just classic Rich Springfield. Got to have that one in the collection. Um uh, Success hasn't spoiled me yet. It's probably the second best. Uh, what kind of fool am I? I get excited. Calling all girls. Uh, Rick was at his peak on these two albums right here. That's whenever his popularity was the highest. Um, working Class Dog, of course, you know, set him off with Jesse's Girl. Uh, it's a good album as well. Now we're going to get into some White Snake. Uh, Slip of the Tongue. I didn't buy this at the time that it came out. I bought it later on. I think it's a good album, uh, just not as good as the previous self-titled, uh, which to me, nothing will ever top. It's just, I really discovered White Snake with this album. I'll admit it. Uh, it's what, you know, let me start listening to their music. Uh, Here I Go Again and Is This Love? I mean, you know, the videos for it were huge. Uh, slide it in great great album here this is one of those i bought after the fact and went back and bought it and listened bought it and listened to it it's amazing slow and easy's on here then we got saints and sinners again it's in a clear reissue there now we're going to get into brian adams he's one of my favorite artists as well so far so good of course it's a uh, greatest hits album 18 till i die uh mutt lane come back again and produce this of course it doesn't have the magic that waking up the neighbors has and waking up the neighbors to me is right up there with reckless in terms of, of brian's greatest album of all time uh i can listen to this from start to finish as well it's kind of like a sounds like a Def leopard album you know it was done around the time brian's vocals are kind of close to joe elliott's you know but this is one of my favorite albums waking up the neighbors it's it's fantastic uh, Into the Fire, I thought it was a letdown from Reckless, personally. Um, so, you know, there was a couple of good songs on there. I can see why that Brian saw a need for a change. Uh, 
because he, he came out with the iconic Reckless. This was so-so, and then, you know, he said, okay, now I got to amp it up. So he got Mutt, Mutt Lang, and that's what really turned him into the superstar he is. But uh, Reckless, front to back, it's classic. I got the uh, Deluxe Edition, and it is amazing. Every track on it is amazing. The title track, see, the title track's not even on this cassette, but this is an iconic album and one of my favorites as well. It would be in the top 10 or 15. Uh, Cuts Like a Knife. I think that really set Brian off. I mean, that's whenever everybody started to get into him because, you know, there's Straight from the Heart, Cuts Like a Knife. There's some great tracks on here. That really got his career really going on that. And uh, You Want It, You Got It. Uh, early on, Brian Adams. It's good. Uh, he was coming into his own on that one. Uh, just not really the commercial album that it should have been. Uh, Great White, Twice Shy. It's more of a blues type of rock. Whereas uh, the Once Bitten down here is just awesome 80s rock. Front to back. I love Once Bitten. This is a great, great album. I wish I had the one in between. I can't think of the name of it. But uh, Once Bitten is really, really great. And then we have Vixen, the female rocker. Uh, kind of reminds you of like a female Bon Jovi. But Edge of a Broken Heart's on here. But uh, again, great album for a hard rocking uh, Vixen. You know, you know, you had some great artists back then like Joan Jett and some others that were really in, and Pat Benatar. So anyway, let's just flip over to side two and we'll just keep going. All right, let's keep the cassette collection video going here with side two of tape case number four. And uh, in here, we're going to find uh, lots of different artists, but uh, we're going to start off with uh, John Cougar Mellencamp. I got quite a few John Cougar Mellencamp tapes, and uh, I'm a huge fan of Mellencamp's. This one is Big Daddy. Uh, here we have The Lonesome Jubilee. I thought it was a, a good album, uh, not as good uh, as Scarecrow. Uh, Scarecrow is my second favorite John Cougar Mellencamp album. I think as a whole, from uh, start to finish, it's it's really a uh, like a, a very cohesive album. Um, you know, as far as how the songs relate to each other, so really, really great. Love Scarecrow. Uh, my favorite John Cougar Mellencamp album is Uh Huh. It's the most rock-oriented, and uh, Crumbling Down, Pink House's Authority Song, Warmer Place to Sleep, uh, Play Guitar, Serious Business, all those are amazing. Uh, just love that album. Uh, great, great album. American Fool. Uh, this is the one that really put Cougar on the map because it had Hurt So Good and Jack and Diane and Hand to Hold On To. So it's a great album as well. Uh, here's Nothing Matters and What If It Did. And then we have just the self-titled John Cougar. Now, if you want to research why some of these are John Cougar and why these are John Cougar Mellencamp, go look that up on the internet and you'll see why. Uh, now we're going to move on to Sticks. Kilroy was here. Uh, Mr. Roboto is on here. A lot of people knock this album because it was kind of a departure from their original sound. I personally like it myself. Uh, here's my favorite uh, Sticks album, Pieces of Eight. Great, great album right there. Then we have uh, Sticks and Cornerstone. Uh, I want to grow the Sticks collection some. There's several others I'd like to get. Uh, now, here we have Huey Lewis and the News. And, of course, I've got several of these as well. This one is Time Flies. Uh, it's in the clear. This is like the best of. Uh, Best of, greatest of, what do you want to call it? Here we have Huey Lewis and Small World. And again, this album was a huge letdown for me from Four. Because I thought Four was a tremendous follow-up to sports. And in my opinion, sports, now we're going to get to it, is one of the, it's in the top 20 albums of all time in, in, among my list. Uh, you won't find a bad song on here, and it's just amazing. And it just really blew Huey Lewis and the news up. I mean, after this album, they were superstars. And uh, this album's iconic. Uh, here we have Picture This. Uh, pretty good album. Um, you know, not the level of sports, but a good album. 
And then we have the self-titled Huey Lewis and the News. Uh, here we have uh, Robert Palmer Addictions Volume 1. I don't have Volume 2. Uh, again, uh, just like a greatest hits. And here we have Heavy Nova. Again, it's not as good as the previous Riptide, but I still like it. It's got Simply Irresistible on it. Uh, Robert Palmer Riptide. Uh, I bought this back in the 80s. Uh, got uh, Addicted to Love on it, uh, which is amazing, and I didn't mean to turn you on. Those videos are great, too. Then we have Power Station. This is kind of like a Robert Palmer Duran Duran combination. Uh, some like it hot bang bang get it on great songs here we got uh, 38 special which 38 special started out more like a blues rock and then they kind of turned into like a uh, survivor in a way <laughs> really a different kind of sound um, on them uh, this one is strength in numbers then we have a uh, tour tour de force Then we have the Wild-Eyed Southern Boys. This is the club release. I would rather have the real release, so I'm on the look for it. But Hold On Loosely is on here, which is fantastic. Then we've got uh, Special Forces. I had the club of this, and I actually found the uh, regular release, but it has Caught Up caught up in You on it, which is fantastic. And now we got uh, Rockin' Into the Night, which the self-titled song's great. And then we have the uh, original 38 Special, Special Delivery. I love this album. I think it's one of their best. Um, and it's front to back great. And I think it's that blues, southern rock that I was looking for. I wish all 38 Specials was like that. But anyway, I just love that album. Here we've got Autograph, Sign In Please. Uh, they uh, put out several albums in the, in the 80s and I, I think probably early 90s. I'm not sure what their time frame exactly was. This was 84, but it had their real popular song, Turn Up the Radio, on it. And uh, it's great, but the rest of the album, you know, so-so. Here we've got uh, Loverboy, Loving Every Minute of It. Of course, the Loving Every Minute of It is amazing. And, uh, you know, I thought about getting some more Loverboy. We'll see. Yeah. and here we have night ranger greatest hits i just went this right with them i didn't want to buy all their albums and for me this pretty much covers what i want from them so great album for greatest hits and here we have skid row i'm not huge huge into skid row like some people are uh to me they're only an okay uh hard rock band but uh you know, I went ahead and got this because I got it for a good price. So anyway, it's just a self-titled skid row. So that concludes tape case number four. Let's put this back up. And we're going to move on to tape case number five next. It's more rock. So uh, we're going to get that uh, going here in just a moment. Okay, we're going to move on to tape case number five now. Just open it up. We're going to start off with some Duran Duran. I'm going to try to get through this a little quicker so we don't have to have such a long video. Uh, big thing. And we got Duran Duran's Notorious. The title track, the most well known, I guess. So Red the Rose. Uh, not really a Duran Duran album officially, but Simon LeBond leads. Election Day sounds just like Duran Duran. We've got Arena, has the Wild Boys on it. Uh, then we got one of my favorite Duran Duran albums, uh, Seven and the Ragged Tiger. It's got the Reflex, New Moon on Monday, Union of the Snake. Another one of my favorites, Rio. Uh, it's got, of course, Hungry Like the Wolf, New Religion, Save a Prayer. Awesome, awesome album there. Then we've got the self-titled Duran Duran, Girls on Film. Uh, Is There Something I Should Know? A lot of great songs there on that one. We've got Minute Work, Cargo. Uh, love Minute Work. I mean, it's just a different kind of group. Nobody sounds like they do today. Uh, then we got Business as Usual. Uh, got Down Under on it. Great, great album. Uh, Peter Gabriel So. Uh, it's, of course, Sledgehammer's on here. And Big Time. Uh, love that album. I want to get the deluxe CD edition of it. Uh, moving on, we've got The Eagles, When Hell Freezes Over. 
uh, again, just like a greatest hits comp here. And then, of course, we've got uh, let me seal, seal this up here. greatest hits volume one and two. Here's volume two. Again, just all their hits on here. And here's volume one, 71 to 75. I think that thing sold millions of copies. Then we've got the Eagles, the long run. Then we've got, I've got the deluxe edition of this on CD, Hotel California. Uh, probably their most well-known song. Then we've got the Eagles, One More Night. And then we've got Eagles on the Border. We've got pretty nice artwork on the front of that one. Uh, now we're just going to get into Don Henley. Uh, the End of the Innocence. Uh, then we've got Don Henley building the perfect beast. Uh, I've only got one Toto album. I wish I kind of had more, but, uh, you know, Toto 4, I guess, is probably their most popular. Uh, now we're going to move on to Hall & Oates. Uh, oh, yeah. Not a lot of people even recognize this album, but uh, it's decent. My favorite Hall & Oates album, along with Rock & Soul Part 1, it's uh, Big Bam Boom. It's got Out of Touch on it, and the cassette has the uh, remix of Out of Touch, which is really, really good. And then we've got Rock and Soul Part 1. Can't count how many times I've listened to that album. Uh, I had the vinyl of that back in the day and used to listen to it almost daily. Uh, I had the vinyl of this as well, H2O. Great, great album here. Love the artwork on the front. And then we've got Private Eyes. Hall Notes. And we got Voices from Hall Notes. I'm not sure how rare this cover is. It's kind of a different kind of release with the RCA in red. And it's the only one I've got like that in my collection. And we've got some Steve Winwood Chronicles. And we've got uh, Steve Winwood Roll With It. And then we've got the my favorite Steve Winwood album, Back in the High Life. Can listen to that front to back. And then we've got uh, Steve Winwood Taking Back the Night. Kind of an older release with the sticker there of the Warner Brothers on the front. So now we're going to flip this case, case over to side two. And we're going to get uh, into some Journey now, which Journey is an amazing group. But here's their greatest hits. This is the remastered release. Uh, so they do these flips with the clear inside of them. They sound great, though. That's the important part. Um, in Trial by Fire, and it's got a little bit of damage on the front, but I didn't pay but a quarter for that, I don't think. So, you know, I went ahead and got it. Then we've got uh, Frontiers. This is not remastered. This is just the regular release. Then we've got Departure. This is actually the uh, remastered version in the clear. And uh, then we have Evolution, which is not remastered. It's just a re re reissue. That's why it's in the clear. Then we got Billy Joel, River of Dreams. Of course, the self-title track's really, really good. Uh, everybody should have this in their collection. Billy Joel, Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2. I need to get Volume 3. I'm not sure if that's on tape or not. Uh, then we've got The Bridge. And then my favorite Billy Joel album of all time. An Innocent Man, I can listen to this. Front to back, I love this album. One of the first tapes I bought back in the day. Then we got Glass Houses. I can remember my sister playing this in her 8-track player. But uh, it's got it's still rock and roll to me. Is one of my favorite Billy Joel tracks. Uh, then we've got Chicago. This is their greatest hits, 82 to 89. This is how they ought to do clear uh, uh, colored cassettes instead of doing the whole cassette. They should just keep it clear and then do whatever color they want inside here. I think that looks so much better than actually coloring the whole cassette. I think that's the the thing that needs to happen. And just, you know, you could make neon, you could make red, you could do splatter. You can do anything you want with that, and, it, and it's going to look so much better than doing the whole tape. It's just the whole tape don't look good when it's colored, my opinion. Chicago 19, and again, it's blue as well. And then we've got Chicago 18, back to the regular clear. And my favorite Chicago album of all time, I had this on vinyl. 
Stay the Night, uh, You're the Inspiration, Hard Habit to Break, an amazing album. Then we've got Chicago 16, again, it's great as well. Then we've got uh, Peter Cetera's solo album, uh, Solitude, Solitaire, good album there. Got the song from Karate Kid on here, I'm, th I'm thinking the next time I fall in love. Uh, now we're going to get a Richard Marks, uh, this is his greatest hits album. Then we've got the very underrated Rush Street. Uh, really, look at that artwork. Uh, really a good release from, from uh, Richard Marks. All three of these are right here, actually. Repeat Offender, great follow-up to the self-titled album. And, of course, the self-titled album is my favorite. I mean, I can play this front to back. It's classic for me. Love that album. Uh, then we've got The Police, Every Breath You Take, the singles. And it's a black cassette. I would have rather been clear with a black, you know, inside, but okay, here we go. Classic, one of my favorite albums of all time. Picked this up when it came out, uh, Synchronicity, and uh, it's, it, it, there's, it, it's iconic. Uh, I think the vinyl goes for a lot of money these days, but uh, anyway, Synchronicity is amazing. Ghost in a Machine, uh, it's pretty close to Synchronicity. I like Ghost in a Machine really well, too. That's supposed to be their haircuts on top of that, by the way. Uh, then we've got uh, Zenyatta Manyatta, if I pronounce that right. And now we've got the Best of Sting. This is just Fields of Gold, and it's the club release. It's in clear. Then we've got some Mario Speedwagon. Uh, the second decade of rock and roll, 81 to 91. I, don't have, I think there I, there is a first one. I don't have it. Uh, this is the one I bought in the 80s. Wheels are turning. Uh, can't stop loving you is on it. Then we've got the uh, remastered uh, High Infidelity with the old uh, cover, but simply because I liked it better. Then we've got Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. This is just a, a greatest hits, which is nice to have, considered the only other Dire Straits I have is Brothers in Arms, which, you know, you had to have that back in the day just for money for nothing. But uh, anyway, I like Dire Straits. But anyway, that completes tape case number five. So we're going to get that put back. And we'll move on to tape case number six next. All right, we're going to continue on with uh, tape case number six. I've uh, got some more rock going on here. Uh, i got a lot of different groups in here, so let's just get started. Uh, got a lot of Bob Seger. I uh, got a good deal on all of these basically for like uh, 75 cents each. This one's the greatest hits. Then we've got It's a Mystery. Then we've got The Fire Inside. Then we've got one of the more popular Bob Seger releases. Uh, one of his best sellers, Like a Rock. It's not clear. I think I bought the clear version and it didn't sound as good. Then we've got my favorite Bob Seger album, probably, Nine Tonight. It's a mixture of uh, live and some studio tracks mixed in, but it's amazing. I had the vinyl of that. Uh, then we've got uh, The Distance. These are all capital. And then we've got uh, another really, really popular release against the wind uh, it's got uh, strut her strut and uh, what else is against the wind of course the title track but real popular release stranger in town another really big release hollywood night still the same old time rock and roll and then we continue with the big hits here with night moves uh, it's got rock and roll never forgets the fire down blow Lots of great songs on that one, too. Then we've got Beautiful Loser. And then my final Bob Seger cassette that I have is Seven. Now we're going to get into some more hard rock uh, that I've got, got in this case. Kill, Lay Down the Law. Got a little hole punch there through it. Then we've got the self-titled Kill. Tangier, Four Winds. 
pretty underrated group there. They didn't get a lot of press back in the day. XYZ, Hungry. I haven't even listened to this yet, so I don't know how good it is. Uh, Damn Yankees, of course, you know, Ted Nugent's group. Uh, Heaven's Edge, amazing band right here that's underrated. Every song on here is good. Uh, it's got the clear tape there inside. Another underrated band uh, that got overlooked. Dirty Looks, Turn of the Screw. Need to get some more Dirty Looks albums. Uh, Bob Horns being arranged, scenes from the south side. Really relaxing music, you know. It's one of those you just put on on a lazy day. Uh, the way it is, this was really popular back in the day, you know, with the, with the way it is. Uh, Every Little Kiss, Mandolin Rain. Great cassette. And we've got Europe, out of this world. Then we've probably got their most well-known release, The Final Countdown, with the title track on there. Then we got the Japanese hard rock band, Loudness on the Brow. I just picked these up, so I haven't had a chance to listen to them. Hopefully they're good. Soldier of Fortune from Loudness. And then we've got uh, Hurricane Eyes. So we'll see how those are. And then we've got Skid Row, self-titled. Uh, in the clear autograph sign in please I've been wanting to get some other releases of theirs but I can't find them in good condition then we've got Steelheart and another new group that I haven't listened to yet TNT Realized Fantasies it's a 90, 90's hard rock band and then we've got the Bullet Boys I'm just going to Keep on moving. Let's see what we got on the side two here. Uh, we have some more, not really hard hard rock, but we got some 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 pop, you know, mixed in here. So you know, we got rock pop and some different things here. Definitely some different genres. Phil Collins hits. Phil Collins both sides. Phil Collins, but seriously. Phil Collins, No Jacket Required, my favorite album of his and one of the most popular albums of the 80s. Basically, every track's a hit. You can listen to this front to back, and this is a, such a nice release. Love that album. It was so popular in the 80s. Face Value, the club release. Then we've got... Genesis, Invisible Touch. Uh, again, this has got Land of Confusion, Invisible Touch, Tonight, 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 In Too Deep. So, great, great album there. Then we've got The Cars, Greatest Hits. And then we've got The Cars with this fantastic artwork. Heartbeat City. Uh, that was the one, that, the one to have when I was growing up. Then we've got the... Uh, debut album good times uh well it's a self-titled album but it has good times roll on it so anyway great album by the cars then we've got in excess kick keeping on moving into some heart brigade not that not as good as the prior two albums which is which i have here bad animals and then we have the uh, self-titled, which is probably the most popular heart release. And we've got Pat Benatar, Best Shots. Got all the hits on it. Uh, Pat Benatar, Seven the Hard Way. Got a little bit of 70s here. Uh, Bad Company, 10 from 6. And we got a little bit of Rod Stewart going on here with the uh, hop sticker fe uh, featuring Infatuation. A couple of good songs on there. I mean, it's the only Rod Stewart album I have. Uh, popular release here, Tears for Fear, songs from the Big Chair. This was huge back in the 80s as well. Shout, um, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Of course, the Georgia Satellites, kind of like Southern Rock. This is a super tape uh, made in Canada. You can see the Super Cassette logo there, but uh, keep your hands to yourself, of course. 
Then we've got Howard Jones, Dream Into Action. Got Things Can Only Get Better. Great song. Great 80s tune. Then we're going to get into some Fleetwood Mac. <coughs> Greatest Hits. Then we've got their kind of like their pop album. Uh, you know, Tango in the Night. I wasn't really a fan of it when it came out. It's okay now. Here's the famous rumors. Uh, everybody's got to have that, right? Uh, I don't have the vinyl of it. I only have the cassette. So, And, I, of course, I have the CD. But we got the Bee Gees Greatest. And no collection's complete without some Bee Gees, right? Then we got uh, Bee Gees for the record. This was a two cassette, actually. And I only have one. So I want to probably never find the other one. But it's got some rare stuff on it. Then we got Fog Hat. The best of Fog Hat. And we got uh, Best of Kansas, uh, Carry On My Wayward Son, Dust in the Wind. Got some great songs on it. Great 70s band. Uh, another great 70s band, the Steve Miller Band. This is the club release of their greatest hits from 74 to 78. <coughs> More greatest hits, Eddie Money. Can't go wrong with Eddie Money, right? I never chose to buy the single releases. I just bought this uh, greatest hits. But I love Eddie Money. Then we got Survivor Vital Signs, which I need to get some more Survivor tapes. But uh, hopefully I can find some soon. Anyway, that completes tape case number six. So uh, we'll just stick it back up here. And if I'm not mistaken, tape case number seven will start R&B. So we'll be getting R&B up here up top. And then uh, we'll just gradually finish on up as we go. So uh, until... The next collection video will move forward. All right, we're going to continue on with tape case number seven. This starts the R&B section of the video. And on this side of the tape case, we've got some prints and prints related. And we're going to start off with prints Raven to the Joy Fantastic. It's in one of the flips, uh, clears. Got a little crack on that case. I need to replace it. We've got Emancipation. Uh, it's a three cassette set. Uh, there's cassette number one. Got the parental advisory sticker. And tape case number two. Tape number two. Tape number three. Of Emancipation. Then we've got 1-800 New Funk. Again, in the clear, we've got Come. And we've got uh, Prince, the symbol album. And this, a this actual case has the symbol on the outside of it. So it's kind of hard to find one in mint condition. And we've got Diamonds and Pearls. Lots of great songs on here. Get Off, Cream. Then we've got the Graffiti Bridge soundtrack, the sequel to Purple Rain. It's got the flip there in the clear. Then I got the Batman soundtrack. It's got a spine slash. Uh, great, great soundtrack here. Uh, just, a, just a wonderful job by Prince. Every song on it's good front to back. Then we've got Love Sexy. Again, this come out instead of the Black Album. Uh, then we've got Sign of the Times. Uh, this is the clear. This is also in a uh, non-clear. There's a white one that I used to have. But anyway, uh, one of Prince's best albums along with Purple Rain. This is probably Prince's second best album behind Purple Rain. Then we've got Under the Cherry Moon, the soundtrack. movie wasn't very good, but the soundtrack's pretty good. It has Kiss on it. Then we've got Around the World in a Day. Um, I bought this day one, uh, went to the tape store and, uh, was there the day that it came out to pick it up. That's because I was so hyped for, for an album after Purple Rain, but Purple Rain, Prince is Best, Twin Doves Cry, front to back, it's amazing. Then we've got 1999, I almost forgot about 1999, it's right up there with, uh, Purple Rain as well. And Sign of the Times as far as Greatest Prince albums goes. Then we've got Controversy. Contains the first Prince song I ever heard. 
Controversy, the self-titled track. That was on the Neon Knights compilation. Then we got Dirty Mind. This is the reissue. No Dolby logo on that. Then we've got uh, Prince For You, the, his first uh, album that he ever put out. Then we've got uh, Minneapolis Genius, the historic 77 recordings. I got this at a gas station. It's a bl all blue tape. Now we've got uh, More Stay, Daydreaming. Great, great uh, cassette there. And we've got More Stay, The Color of Success. It's more like an EP, but a good album by Morse. Then we've got The Time, Pandemonium. Then we've got The Amazing Ice Cream Castle, which has got Jungle Love and the Bird on it. Then we've got The Time, What Time Is It? Then we've got the self-titled, The Time. It's got the Warner Brothers sticker there on it, uh, on the front. Now we've got Apollonia in the clear. You can see a slight little hole punch right there. Apollonia 6, I got two copies of this. Uh, great, great um, album here produced by Prince. Uh, it's got Sex Shooter on it. Then we've got Sheena Easton, The Lover and Me. And then we've got uh, Sheena Easton, A Private Heaven, which has Sugar Walls and Strut on it. Of course, Prince wrote Sugar Walls. Okay, let's keep going to my side two here. We're going to get into some Madonna. Uh, we've got Paula Abdul, Sheila E., Mariah Carey. Lots of good, good tapes right here. And we've got Madonna in music. We've got Madonna's Ray of Light, and I'm not sure. This is a foreign release I have of it. Not sure where that's from. You can see the stickers on it. We've got Madonna, Something to Remember. We've got Mar Madonna Erotica. We've got uh, the two you can't hardly make out there. We've got Madonna Bedtime Stories. We've got Madonna of the Immaculate Collection. We've got Madonna Like a Prayer. And this one doesn't smell like the incense. Uh, those are kind of hard to find. But this uh, was her last great album, in my opinion. Madonna You Can Dance has my favorite remix on here of Into the Groove. We've got Madonna Who's That Girl, the soundtrack. Then we've got probably my favorite Madonna album, with, along with Like a Virgin, True Blue, front to back. It's great. I've got it on vinyl, 180 gram. Uh, here we have Like a Virgin, of course, the classic Like a Virgin, front to back. Great album. And then, you know, right along with it, uh, the self-titled Madonna is also considered one of the greatest Madonna albums of all time, in my opinion. Then we're going to get into Paula Abdul, Head Over Heels. Uh, in the clear, we've got uh, Paula Abdul Spellbound. You know, she went on to be the judge on American Idol, but you know, she was really a great singer and dancer. She started out with the Lakers, I think, as a dancer. Forever Your Girl, the classic, uh, front to back, it's amazing. This came out, it was one of the more popular pop records that was put out in that time. We've got Sheila E, Sex Symbol. It's got the spine slash, unfortunately. Then we've got Sheila E. This is on Paisley Park Records. And then we've got uh, Sheila E and Romance 1600. Prince wrote a couple of the songs on here and, and, and even sings on Love Bazaar. Then we've got the awesome uh, Glamorous Life, which Prince produced and wrote a lot of the stuff. Uh, then we get into my Mariah section, which I'm really proud of it. Uh, all these are in great, great shape. Rainbow, and all of them are the flips with the clear. Every single one of them. Mariah was consistent with these releases, and uh, you can see there that they're all 
to those flip covers with the uh, with the clear in the clear. That's the pattern on all of these. And I found them in all in mint condition. Here's Mariah Carey, Merry Christmas, the greatest Christmas album ever done, ever made, in my opinion, which has All I Want for Christmas on it. Then we've got Music Box, uh, MTV Unplugged, to prove Mariah could sing live. And then we've got Mariah Carey, Emotions. Amazing album here. And then we've got the uh, self-titled debut album from Mariah Carey. And in front to back, it's amazing. Then we've got Jody Watley, Larger Than Life. And then one of my favorite albums, uh, R&B albums, uh, Jody Watley, self-titled, front to back. This is just a great, great record. Uh, I thought it was weird that the track, the track listing was on bottom instead of top. And then uh, the artist was on the top. That was weird for the time. But amazing album right there, front to back. I love it. But uh, that concludes tape case number seven. And we'll be moving on to tape case number eight next. So uh, we'll just get it pulled down and start going over it. Okay, we're going to move on to tape case number eight here. We're making good progress. And let's just crack this open here. And... Uh, First up, we've got uh, Michael Jackson here. Um, Blood on the dance floor. In the clear with the flip cover. Got the original hype sticker too. Kind of cool. Then we've got history in the making, or past, present, and future. Book one, again, it's the flip cover. And then we've got uh, cassette number two of the past, present, and future history. Uh, then we've got Michael Jackson's Dangerous. Uh, great album here. And again, flip cover in the clear. Then we've got Michael Jackson's Bad. I bought this the day it came out. Of course, you know, after Thriller, you know, whatever album Michael put out, I was going to be buying it. So, you know, I went to my local tape store and bought that day one. Uh, thriller, uh, first tape I ever bought, and uh, you know we just wore this tape out in the car at home. Uh, one of the greatest albums of all time, no doubt. Then uh, we've got Off the Wall. I discovered it after Thriller, and I thought it was amazing. So you know, just this whole section here of Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad and Dangerous. These four amazing and we've got the jackson's victory i like state of shock on here i mean you know what can i say it was a uh, out around the time bad or uh, thriller was out then we've got michael jackson 14 original hits uh, this is when he was younger obviously but you know abc rock and robin all those we got jermaine jackson uh that's got one jermaine and then we're going to move on to Janet Jackson. Uh, decade, 86 to 96 in the flip cover with the clear. And we've got Janet, not the flip cover like the other one. Good album. And then we've got uh, the classic Rhythm Nation. Great follow-up to Control. Again, uh, I bought this... Uh, Day one. This is not my original release that I bought. Mine was black. And what had happened is, is I found this clear, and it found that it sounded so much better, so I just kept it. But it's a uh, BMG Music Service release. But, man, I bought that day one because I was so in love with Control. Now, Control I've got on vinyl as well. <laughs> one of my favorite R&B albums of all time, no doubt. Uh, you can listen to this front to back. Control, Nasty. Tons of hits on that thing. Then you've got Janet Jackson's Dream Street. Really young voice on these from Janet. She didn't really get her sound until Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis came along and really helped her out. But there's a self-titled Janet Jackson. Now we're going to get into Whitney Houston. we got the Bodyguard soundtrack with the flip cover in the clear. 
And then we've got I'm Your Baby Tonight, Whitney Houston again, another flip cover with the clear. Then these first two Whitney albums are just classic uh, front to back. You can listen to Whitney Houston, Whitney. And then we've got uh, the debut album, Whitney Houston. Just an amazing album. What a debut. What a voice she had. Amazing voice. One of the greatest singers ever. Then we've got Britney Spears, Femme Fatale. It's a gold limited edition. This came from Urban Outfitters. But uh, Till the World Ends, uh, I Want to Go, uh, just Criminal, uh, tons of great, great songs on here. I think that's a, it's a very underrated album. Then we've got uh, Brittany Jean. Again, it's Urban Outfitters. It's a blue release. Uh, this album, you know, for me, was just okay. Uh, I just thought that the prior albums were so much better. Then we've got uh, Britney Spears' Blackout. It's in like a, uh, it's almost a red color. But is this a really good album from Britney as well. Then we've got Circus. It's in the yellow. I love the design on this. Uh, really, really, really nice concept. And we've got Britney. Again, Urban Outfitter release. Uh, blue cassette. Uh, tons of great songs on here. I'm a Slave for You. I'm Not a Girl, Not Yet a Woman. Boys, Anticipating, Cinderella. Tons of great songs. And we've got the classic In the Zone. Again, this is an Urban Outfitters clear blue release. Uh, I paid an average of about 12 bucks a piece for these Urban Outfitter releases. So I really got a good deal on them. Then we've got Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. This is like in a purple clear. Classic, classic album from Britney. You know, it's got the title track and Lucky. <coughs> Tons of great songs. And then this is the official release that came out. Uh, this is not Urban Outfitters. I just happen to have this. It's a little bit different artwork, and uh, it sounds a little bit better than the Urban Outfitters, obviously, because it's Dolby Noise Reduction. Then I don't have the Urban Outfitter release of uh, Baby One More Time. This is just the original release. It sounds great, though. Uh, again, it's classic front to back. Uh, you know, when Britney came along, she just hit the scene, and it was an amazing time back then. We've got uh, Millie Vanilli, Girl, You Know It's True, the famed, uh, you know, lip sync. that it's in a flip clear. I like Millie Vanilli. I like the, whoever's singing it. They're good. Good R&B. Let's flip over and see what we got here on side two of, a, of this tape case. Got some Billy Ocean, uh, Greatest Hits. Billy Ocean, tear down these walls in the clear. Then these first two Billy Oceans are just classic. Uh, we got Love Zone, tons of hits on both of them. Uh, this is entitled Suddenly, and it was, you know, Billboard hits uh, out the wazoo on this thing. Uh, just a great, great 80s album. And Billy Ocean, you can't get any more R&B than him. Then we've got Tina Turner, Simply the Best. I really love Tina Turner's voice. It's just so unique. Uh, she's just a great, great singer all the way around. Uh, this is Break Every uh, Rule. The follow-up, I bought this day one because Private Dancer, I, was, I just love this album. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, I listened to it front to back, but What's Love Got to Do With It and it was a number one hit. This is a number one album. Uh, it's classic. I found it in the clear, which was hard to do. Uh, you don't see many of them in the clear, but just a great album. Then we've got the classic George Michael, Faith. This thing is packed with hits. Uh, just really, really awesome R&B from George Michael. Then we've got Wham! Make It Big. This is more on the pop side, but number one songs, uh, Everything She Wants, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, Careless Whisper, just classic 80s, I mean, all the way around. Then we've got Fantastic, uh, just an okay album. Uh, 
you know, not that great, but I just bought it because I had these other two. Then we've got some classic Culture Club here. I really love Culture Club. Uh, all four of these releases are fantastic. Uh, luxury, to, luxury to Heartache is very underestimated, in my opinion. It's a great, great album. I think, I think it even tops uh, Waking Up With The House On Fire, uh, which, you know, they had a hard time making that album, but it's still good. Then we've got two classic ones, Color By Numbers. Uh, I don't know how many millions of records this thing sold, but Karma Chameleon, It's a Miracle. Oh, gosh, uh, Church of the Poison Mind, Miss Me Blind. Such classic tracks. Such great 80s music on these. And then we got uh, Kissing to Be Clever. I've been looking for the CD of that, the remastered. It's kind of hard to find. Then we've got some Shaka Khan. Again, you can't get more R&B than Shaka. But, you know, she uh, she can crank out some great, great R&B uh, this, I think, is the club release uh, of uh, Destiny. I think this is available in the clear. I'm not sure. I never found one, though. Then we've got the classic I Feel For You with the song Prince Road and put her on, I mean, just sent her into the stratosphere. Then we've got another great R&B artist, Pebbles, Straight From My Heart. This is more pop, though, than her previous two albums. And it was really a letdown because these first two Pebbles albums are phenomenal R&B dance, uh, you know, and especially the first one. You know, this one's got uh, Mercedes Boy, Girlfriend, uh, tons of other great songs, but this is a classic R&B. Pebbles is amazing. And we've got Belinda Carlisle coming up here. Of course, more pop on the pop side, of course. But uh, that's uh, Runaway Horses. And we've got a couple of real popular albums, Heaven on Earth. You know, and of course, the, the song itself is, is one of her big hits. Then we've got the self-titled uh, Belinda from Belinda Carlisle. Great to find that in the clear. Then we've got the Go-Go's, Beauty and the Beat. I need to get more Go-Go's albums. Then I've got Debbie Gibson, Electric Youth. Great voice. I mean, as good as Madonna, but just didn't get the hype, uh, in my opinion. I think she has just as good as voice as Madonna. Uh, this album here, Out of the Blue, is fantastic. Love Debbie Gibson. True 80s artist. Then we've got uh, Cindy Lauper, True Colors. And then the very classic and one of my favorite albums, She's So Unusual. And I found this in the clear, which was hard to do. But, I mean, this is a front-to-back album for me, easily. Then we've got another great 80s artist, Rick Astley. Uh, Whenever You Need Somebody. <coughs> great, great songs on here. He's a great R&B artist. Then we've got our Laura Branigan, Self Control. Of course, not R&B, more pop, but The Lucky One, Self Control. Again, I need to get some more Laura Branigan because I really like her voice. But anyway, that completes tape case number eight. I'm just going to stick this back up here. There we go. And we'll be back for tape case number nine. All right, we're going to continue on with tape case number nine here. And this is just a 30 uh, case, and it's a uh, Sayo. Uh, it looks like it's from the early 80s, maybe maybe even late 70s. It's got like a uh, velvet on the inside. It's kind of neat. I got it for like two bucks at a thrift store. But anyway, this is more R&B. This is more the rap side uh, of it. And I just kind of grouped them all together. So uh, we're just going to get started here with Run DMC, Tougher Than Leather. Uh, Run DMC means a lot to me. They were just uh, the, really the first commercial rap group. Uh, here's Raisin Hell, probably their most well-known album. Walk This Way is on there. Then we've got uh, King of Rock, uh, their second album. It's a phenomenal album front to back. And then here's the one that's my personal favorite and the one that I played the most was the first one. Uh, front to back, I was amazed by the rapping and I, it just hooked me on rap. Uh, you know, I don't really like it as much today uh, because of what it turned into. I just like the old school rap 
And, you know, that's just where it's at for me. But here's LL Cool J, Radio. And, of course, the uh, I Can't Live Without My Radio is the first track. That's an amazing song. Sounds a lot like Run DMC, but he's phenomenal. You know, everybody knows LL Cool J. Then we've got another one I wore out, uh, Houdini's Escape. And uh, Five Minutes of Funk was one of those songs that I could listen to over and over and over. But, again, I love me some Houdini. Then we've got the uh, Beastie Boys. Uh, man, when they hit the scene, uh, everybody was, like, blown away. And uh, you got to fight for your right to party. She's crafty. Uh uh, sang Soul Millions, so, you know, it, it, just an amazing rap album. Then we've got the soundtrack to Breaking. Uh, love the movie. Love the soundtrack. Uh, it's good front to back. Uh, listen to it a lot. I really played that a lot. Then we've got the other movie that was out, Beat Street. It's got some Grandmaster Melly Mel on there. Uh, just a different variety of artists, but it's, it's an amazing soundtrack as well. Not as good as Breaking, but still good. And here's a uh, cassette that I grew up with learning to rap, uh, learning to uh, break dance to. It's called Break Dance, and this is mu music for break dancing, learn to walk, electric boogaloo. I used to have the little mat and everything with the, and the poster and all that. Man, just some great songs on here. Uh, Rocket, I think, is on here. Uh, Electric Kingdom, uh, Tour de France, uh, amazing album. Brings back so many memories. Uh, then we got UTFO. Uh, again, this was a new group that came out, and I was really blown away by them. Leader of the Pack, uh, Roxanne, Roxanne. A great, great rap album. We got Hammer, Too Legit to Quit, In the Clear. A big old tape, too, right there. Then we got Hammer, let's get it started, or MC Hammer this time, in the clear. Then we got Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him, uh, I guess I guess really sprung him on the scene there. Uh, then we got one of my favorite R&B groups of all time, uh, Midnight Star. Uh, this album's not as good as their previous album, but anyway, Headlines, in the clear. Then we've got Planetary Invasion, I mean... Again, I love the robotic sound and the and the and the just the rhythm of these uh, body snatchers. Uh, what else we got good on here? Operator, uh, just great, great album. Probably their best album is the first one, uh, "No Parking on the Dance Floor," and of course the title song, "Freakazoid." Uh, I mean, you can really break dance to these songs. Electricity. Great, great album. Then we got Cameo, Word Up. Of course, the title track. Everybody knows that. Then we got Cameo, Single Life. Uh, these are all hologram releases in the uh, with the uh, tan case. Those are always cool to have. Cameo, Style. Again, great, great R&B artist. Uh, then we've got Dr. Dre, The Chronic. I ordered this from uh, Tapehead City. It's, a, I guess, the Smoke Clear. And then we've got uh, Snoop Doggy Dog, Doggy Style. This one also I ordered from uh, Tapehead City in the red cassette. So it's kind of cool. Then we got one everybody knows, Vanilla Ice. Uh, broke onto the scene as the, really the first big white rapper to, you know, really grab everybody's attention but uh, ice ice baby of course there was controversy with ice ice baby they were about copyrights but uh anyway great album then we've got r kelly 12 play i guess he's a jailbird now but uh, that's a great album right there uh keith sweat uh keep it coming in the clear and then we have just the self-titled keith sweat which had twisted on it uh, this is a whole album is amazing. Key Sweat's a great, great artist. Uh, Key Sweat, I'll give my uh, my love to you. I think it's got to uh, make them sweat on it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, Make You Sweat. Yeah, great song. Then we got the Daz Band, uh, Greatest Hits. Of course, Let It Whip uh, is a, one of the songs that I was hooked on. In the, in the early 80s. I think it's around 82, but it's on another comp I have, but I love Daz Band. Really dance to their stuff. 
Then we got Daz Band Wild and Free and Clear. And then we got Daz Band Jukebox. Cool cover on that. Looks like a, a jukebox from, and then the girl on the front looks like she's from the 80s. So that's my time for sure. But anyway, that completes tape case number nine. So let's get this back up here and we'll move on to tape case number 10 in the next video. Okay, I'm gonna go on with uh, tape case number 10 and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do my soundtracks. Uh, this isn't necessarily all my soundtracks, but this is the majority of them and, and I've got it in a 30 case. So uh, let's just get on into it. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time and one of my favorite soundtracks, Rocky IV, uh, Burning Heart on there. Uh, there's no easy way out. I love that soundtrack. It's hard hitting soundtrack, good rock soundtrack. Uh, Footloose, classic. You can't go wrong with Footloose. Uh, just tons of classic songs on there, including the title track. And then we've got Grease. Uh, Olivia Newton-John, who just recently passed away, and John Travolta. And uh, you're the one that I want, just classic. And then, you know, all the other great songs that are on the Grease soundtrack. Then we've got another classic, iconic soundtrack, Flash Dance, the title songs on there. But the music really was so important in Flash Dance, and uh, just love this movie as well. Really a great movie. My sister was really into that movie. Then we've got uh, Staying Alive, uh, John Travolta, directed by Sylvester Stallone. Of course, the Bee Gees are on there. Uh, I like the movie myself. Uh, a lot of people said that it wasn't a very good sequel to Saturday Night Fever, but I like it. Then we've got uh, Dirty Dancing. I mean, everybody's familiar with these movies. Uh, just an iconic soundtrack. I mean, nowadays with movies, soundtracks, you never hear about them. Uh, back in the day, though, they were very important to the, to the movie. Uh, here's Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, actually, the first Beverly Hills Cop is my favorite comedy of all time, and that's this soundtrack. Uh, just tons of classic uh, songs on here. Um, Axel F., you know, is on here. And uh, you can see New Attitude from Patti LaBelle. Neutron Dance from the Porn Sister. Just tons of great songs. Uh, the Big Chill. Uh, I have actually never seen this movie, surprisingly. But the soundtrack's got a lot of classic songs. It's from Motown. And then uh, more music. Or Well, that was more music from the... Well, is that more music? Yeah. More songs from Big Chill soundtrack. So they, they couldn't fit all the uh, songs onto one. They had to come out with two. Dirty Dancing has another one, too, if I, I think. Uh, here's Back to the Future. I think this thing's worth about $15, to be honest with you. Uh, just a classic soundtrack again, and the title track, got Back in Time, you know, is really what you want to think about, not Back to the Future. But uh, Miami Vice, the great, great television show. The, the, the theme song for it, uh, classic. But Miami Vice was such an iconic, uh, groundbreaking show, but uh, the soundtrack's awesome. Then we've got uh, Vision Quest, Madonna's on here, some other great songs. The movie's not that great, but the soundtrack's great. Uh, Days of Thunder with Tom Cruise. You can see here I've got my Tom Cruises together. But uh, Days of Thunder, uh, good movie for NASCAR, if you like NASCAR. Uh, here's the iconic Top Gun, one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. Kenny Loggins, Loverboy, Berlin, Miami Sound Machine's on here. Just tons of great songs on here. Um, Highway Through the Danger Zone. How can you go wrong with that? Iconic. Then we have Cocktail. Not that great of a movie in my opinion, but I like. I had to have the soundtrack. Risky Business. Uh, again, this is in a black. I don't think it's can Canadian. I'm not sure, but it's really neat looking. I don't remember where I got that, but it's really a nice soundtrack. Then we've got Eddie and the Cruisers. Uh, again, uh, good movie. Great soundtrack. We've got Disorderlies. The Fat Boys are on here. <laughs> really just a slapstick type of movie. Then we've got another iconic soundtrack, uh, Ghostbusters. 
really just the title track is is the one that's on here that everybody knows, but it's iconic. And ever since the words, I think Huey Lewis sued them over that song and got some money. But anyway, uh, James Bond, of course, the opening title sequences are iconic, and they're all here. And this is uh, worth a little bit of money, too, maybe 10 bucks. But uh, anyway, I love James Bond movies, and just having the soundtrack's really cool. Bright Lights, Big City. Again, not that great of a movie, but uh, it's in a black case and a flip. But Prince put a song on here, so that's what makes it pretty interesting because it was like a B-side. Uh, then we have American Graffiti. Uh, tons of great songs on here. And this is a coming-of-age movie with Ron Howard and some others. And So anyway, it's a great movie. George Lucas uh, directing. Then we have Stand By Me, an iconic movie. The soundtrack isn't as well-known, but I saw it and picked it up, so why not? And here's another one of my favorite comedies and my favorite Robin Williams movie, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Really enjoy this movie. I mean, it's got the, the comedy and then the drama. Just really a good mix, you know, kind of like MASH was. But uh, great songs on here from the from that they played back in the day. Then we've got one of my favorites, uh, the Charlie Brown uh, Christmas. Uh, this is the music that they play in the uh, TV episode. Well, I guess it's a TV special, but anyway, you can't go wrong with Charlie Brown. Uh, now we're not getting into soundtracks, but this is just a compilation. Um, Hot Nights and City Lights, you can kind of see the track listing there. Uh, interesting 70s music on there in the early 80s. Then we've got Street Beat. Uh, this again is a K-Tail. I like get collecting the K-Tail tapes. They're pretty cool. And again, it's got some uh, 80s R&B on there. Then we've got Disco Mania. Uh, this one, it, it, it's the name says it all. It's got a ton of the uh, great disco hits from that era. So I just, it's nice to have a little piece of that history. And then for me, this is iconic. We Are the World, the title track, the the uh, the whole thing of how it got made. And it's just, you know, it's something you need for your collection. And plus Prince donated a song, so you can't go wrong with that. So there we go. That's tape case number 10. And we're going to do tape case number 11 uh, next time. All right, let's move on to tape case number 11 here. I have got a lot of new cassettes while I've been filming my collection, but I'll try to cover all of them at the very end, the additions. But anyway, let's go on to number 11. And if we're going to have the R&B here. And we're going to start off with Sky, Start of a Romance, in the clear. Sky, Inner City. A great R&B group here. I really, really like their, their music. Sky, Skyline. Uh, I like every song on that one. Really good, good, good cassette. And then we got Sky, Skyway. Expose. Uh, typical 80s sounding girl group. Uh, pretty up-tempo beat there. Now this one's more from the 90s. Brandy. Uh, sitting up in my room, moving on. Great, great songs. I really used to bump them in the car. Another 90s band, Soul to Soul, Keep on Moving. Great, great cassette there. And then we've got the Bangles, Greatest Hits in the Clear Flip. And then we've got Bangles, Different Light. Of course, Manic Monday's on there. Prince wrote that. And then we've got Aretha Franklin. Who's Zooming Who? Uh, of course, the uh, self-titled. There's some other good things on there. Love me some Aretha. Then we got Cool and the Gang, uh, the 20th Century Millennium Masters, the best ofs. Love Cool and the Gang. Then we've got uh, Cool and the Gang, Greatest Hits and More. Got some rarities on it. Some mixes and stuff. Emergency. Wish I had more Cool and the Gang, but I don't. Uh, ladies night and we got Taylor Dane soul dancing in the clear flip it's a club edition you can tell there Taylor Dane can't fight fate really really super voice on Taylor Dane uh, tell it to my heart of course you know the self title track everybody knows it then we got Samantha Fox greatest hits 
Then we've got uh, self, Samantha Fox, self-titled. Then we got her breakthrough album here that everybody knows, Touch Me, Samantha Fox, with the self-titled song. Go over here to Gloria Estefan, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, in the clear flip. Gloria Estefan, Greatest Hits, in the clear flip. Gloria Estefan and Miami Sound Machine, Let It Loose. I guess I bet you say that on it. Primitive Love coming up. Of course, you know, got Conga on there. Great, great tape, case, tape right there. Lisa, Lisa, and Cult Jam, Straight to the Sky. Lisa, Lisa, and Cult Jam, Spanish Fly. And here is Lisa, Lisa, and Cult Jam with Full Force. We got Shannon, Let the Music Play, of course the self-titled. I like the little sticker there from Warner Brothers. That's how they used to do them back in the day. But Shannon, great, under, underrated R&B singer. And we got Stacy Q, Better Than Heaven. Two of Hearts is on there. Okay, and then we've got Olivia, Olivia's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. Wish I had Volume 1. I think I saw it once, but I didn't get it. Sad to see her pass away. I'm going to flip over on here on case number 11. We're going to get into some more R&B. Uh, Confunction. Got quite a bit of these because I found them all in a, at a really good deal. Burning Love. Just a great, great R&B group. Electric Lady. These are all in the original Polygram Tan cases. Then we've got Fever. Confunction to the Max. You can see here, all these are the standard polygram releases. Confunction 7. And then Confunction Spirit of Love. Now we're going to get back into some 80s here. The Jets, Believe. Then we've got the self-titled Jets. Atlantic Star coming up. Secret Lovers. Great song there. And then we've got uh, Atlantic Star Brilliance. Got Stephanie Mills coming up. Really underrated singer, R&B singer there. Then we've got uh, Merciless in the Polygram. She switched to MCA, but originally she was Polygram. And uh, I've got The Cure. Some 90s here R&B. Uh, Anita Baker, Rhythm of Love. Of course, Anita Baker, Rapture, probably her best known album right here with the self-titled song. And then we get into some Pointer Sisters, really big into the Pointer Sisters. This is their greatest hits. And then we've got Pointer Sisters, Contact. And then we've got Pointer Sisters, Breakout, my favorite Pointer Sisters album. Uh, Jump for My Love, Automatic, I'm So Excited. Neutron Dance, wow, I mean, you know, amazing album. Vanessa Williams in the Comfort Zone, you know, self-titled track there. And Prince Protege, Carmen Electra here. And then we're going to get into some Lionel Richie, Dancing on the Ceiling, self-titled track. I mean, there's, there's just tons of hits on here, uh, you know, so Say You, Say Me, a bunch of other good ones. The best Lionel Richie album ever did, ever he ever made was "Can't Slow Down." Uh, just the greatest hits of the whole thing, front to back, really. Lionel Richie, self-titled. Then we got the Commodores, all the great hits. Donna Summer, greatest hits, Volume One and Two. How can you go wrong with Donna Summer? She's amazing. Hot stuff. Uh, the very best of Gladys Knight in the Pips. Again, another great, great R&B cassette. The Fix, greatest hits. And we're getting some 90s, early 90s R&B. Belle Bib DeVoe, Poison, with the self-titled track. And here's one that brings back a lot of memories. Uh, I played this in the car constantly. Let It Whip, Super Freak, Call Me, Controversy, Get Down On It. I mean, you got the power. 
this is an amazing compilation. It's one of the first cassettes I ever bought, uh, and I wore it out. I mean, it's just amazing. And then we got Bobby Brown, Dance Like You Know It. I had Don't Be Cruel, but it messed up. So anyway, there is tape case number 11. So let's get this put back. If we can. And we will move on to tape case number 12. All right, we're finally moving on to tape case number 12. My final tape case. But I do have a couple of uh, wood cases that I'll have to go over. But anyway, let's get into these. We've got uh, Starship, Knee Deep in the Hoopla. Got We Built This City and Sarah on it. Jefferson Starship, Winds of Change. See that there was a record bar purchase. Then we've got Jefferson Starship, Freedom at Point Zero. Then we've got Loverboy, Loving Every Minute of It. Of course, the title track, Working for the Weekends on there. Then we've got Loverboy, Keep It Up. Then we've got Loverboy, Get Lucky. Southern Rock here, Leonard Skinner, Greatest Hits. That's the club tape. Then we've got Leonard Skinner, Gold and Platinum. My sister had this on vinyl. Really played that a lot. Give me three steps. Uh, Mike and the Mechanics, Silent Running. Well, this is self-titled, but Silent Running is a big, big release off of that. Then we got Night Ranger, uh, Greatest Hits. I don't have any other Night Ranger except this, so, you know, it's got all their good stuff on it. In the clear. Michael McDonald, No Looking Back, in the clear. And we got Michael M McDonald, if, if that's what it takes. Now we get into some Doobie Brothers, the best of the Doobie Brothers. I think Minute by Minute's on there, I don't remember. Uh, one Step Closer, the Doobie, Doobie Brothers. Then we got uh, Southern, Southern Country Rock, Charlie Daniels, uh, Hits of a Decade. Devil went down to Georgia. Then we got the Fine Young Cannibals, Raw and Remix. Some good remixes on there. Boys to Men. Self titled. I'll Make Love to You, of course. Uh, XYZ Hungry. Haven't listened to this. Don't know if it's good or not. Laura Brannigan, Self Control. Uh, the Lucky One. Uh, lots of good songs on here. Laura Brannigan, really unique voice. Really like Laura Brannigan. Then we got Best of Berlin, uh, 79 to 88. I think it's got the uh, Take My Breath Away and then uh, No More Words. That's a great song. Then we got uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, Damn the Torpedoes. Only Tom Petty album in my collection. Tapau, self titled. A little bit of Heart and Soul. Then we got Bad English. I think when I see you smiles on that, a big hit. You got John Fogarty, Center Field. Of course, the title track, the Old Man's Down the Road's on there. Some 90s R&B stuck over here, I don't know why, but Anita Howard, uh, Do You Want to Ride? Used to thump to that in the car. Freak Like Me. Then we got Lita Ford, Greatest Hits. Very, really one of the really great female rockers of all time along with Joan Jett and uh, Pat Benatar. Then we got Lita, uh, self-titled, Lita Ford. Then we got Yes. These are hard to get out of this tape case. They're really, it's, they're really tight in here. 90125, Owner of the Lonely Heart, of course. Everybody knows that. Then we got Blondie, Greatest Hits. The best of Blondie, I guess is what they call it. Call Me, of course, is on there with some other great songs. Then we got another, the first really girls um, hair band from the 80s, Vixen. And I really like Vixen a lot. Uh, Edge of a Broken Heart, of course. So that completes tape case number 12, and that completes all of my actual cases. And all we like here is this middle wood case and the bottom wood case. And then I've got some doubles over here, that, but I'm going to save that for a separate video. 
So anyway, we're almost to the finish. Okay, line. we're going to continue on with our cassette collection video. This is uh, case number 13. And I got this for like two bucks at a thrift store. It holds uh, 42 tapes. And let's just get into the first row here. Uh, we're going to get into a little Elvis. I'm a big Elvis fan. My mom was huge into Elvis. But here's the uh, Essential 70s Masters. Uh, num a, di a cassette 5. And here's the 70s Masters cassette 4. And these are hard to get in and out of this thing because they have to line up perfectly. Uh, here's number 3 of the 70s Masters. Great artwork and covers on these. These are all BMG releases. Here's um, cassette number two. Of course, all these are clear. I got these at a really, really good price. I mean, we're talking probably under a dollar a piece. I got the boxes they came in too, but I decided I liked them better in the cases. Here's the 68 comeback TV special. Uh, here is the 50s masters. This is uh, cassette five. I'm big into the 50s music. I mean, that's uh, really where Elvis was with a... I like the 70s stuff too, but, you know, there's just something about that, you know, early stuff of Elvis. Here's number three. And here is the 50s Masters number two. And here's the 50s Masters uh, number one here. Then we've got uh, some gospel Elvis. This is uh, also a little small box set. Uh, this is the uh, Amazing Grace, his greatest gospel hits. I think that's uh, cassette two. And here's cassette one of that gospel series. And then we have the White Christmas with all the uh, great Elvis Christmas songs. Nothing like a, I listen to Elvis every year at Christmas. It's great stuff. Santa bring my baby back to me. Now we're just getting into some miscellaneous stuff, some more soundtracks and compilations and a few oddball tapes, but here's Rough Cut, self-titled, uh, you know, underrated. I mean, uh, they didn't get a really good record deal, you know, just didn't get pushed, really. Pat Benatar, Seven the Hard Way. And here's one I got from Disney Movie Rewards, uh, Cruella soundtrack. I've not even opened it, but, uh, you know, I think it goes for a little bit of money now, but I didn't pay anything for it. Uh, we got Pretty in Pink, the soundtrack. And we got Pretty Woman, the original motion picture soundtrack. Then we've got uh, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. I got that because it was a buck. Can't beat that. And then we've got Star Wars, uh, Return of the Jedi. Did, I don't have the booklet that came with it. Then we've got The Sounds of the 70s, and there are several of these. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. This is 79. Uh, so then we go 79, take two. He's got a lot of great hits on him. Uh, 78, let's see the Bee Gees there. 78, uh, take two. Uh, 77. I could have got all of these, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't really like the early, early 70s stuff that I was seeing on. So I only got 77 to 79. And here's my last Elvis cassette, the uh, 30 number one hits. Move on to the third slot here. Just a, a lot of miscellaneous tapes that basically I bought them and uh, just didn't have room in the other cases. Here's the Rhythmics, Be Yourself Tonight, RCA release, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Every Great Number One Hit. Then we've got Till Tuesday, Welcome Home, uh, Till Tuesday, Voices Carry. Some 90s stuff here. Color Me Bad. Uh, more 90s stuff. In Vogue. Funky Divas. Some more 90s. All for One. Uh, continuing in the kind of 90s theme here with uh, Technotronic. Pump Up the Jam. Everybody knows that song. Now we get into a little uh, Club Nouveau. Uh, Put that back. Then we got New Kids on the Block, Hang a Tough. Wasn't a big fan of theirs originally. Uh, Jesse Johnson, Every Shade of Love, Prince Project. Jesse Johnson, uh, Review. Great cassette here, the Four Tops 20th Century Collection. Great, great set there. Crowded House, uh, kind of a different kind of artwork there on that. Really cool. So, 
man, we got through that quick. So that completes case number 13. We have case number 14 to go, and then we'll be done with this collection video. All right, we're going to continue on with the final video of my tape collection video. And this is basically tapes that I've picked up during my video and just a few other miscellaneous items that didn't fit in other cases. And, of course, you know, it ends with the um, cassette single starting here on the tail end. And then I've got a whole bunch of cassette singles over here, but I'm not going to show every one of those. I'm going to concentrate on just the regular releases. So let's just get into it. And the first one I picked up was Diamond Star Halos from Def Leppard, the brand new release. It's in a red case. Pretty awesome there. Glad to have that. I got the vinyl and the CD, of course. Uh, Freely's Comet, uh, Live Plus One. Uh, surprised I didn't own any other Ace Freely cassettes. I'm looking for some. Van Halen, The Best Of, Volume One. Uh, I think I've got just about every Van Halen release now on cassette. Uh, Rat and Roll, uh, 18, 8191 in the clear. We got Scorpions, Face the Heat in the clear. This, this was on my want list forever. Scorpions, Love It First Sting. Then we've got Scorpions, Animal Magnetism. It's the reissue in the clear. Firehouse 3. Come out in the mid-90s. Kind of a departure from their earlier two, but still good. Twisted Sister, Come Out and Play. It's in the clear. Judas Priest, Turbo. Standard CBS release. Then we've got Foreigner, Unusual Heat. Now this next one is just a uh, remastered version with the flip uh, thing in the clear. I had the reissue of this before, but I like this one much better because of the cover. Then we got Flashback, 38 Special in the clear. The Outfield, Play Deep. It's got uh, Your Love on it. Standard CBS release. Bonnie Tyler, uh, Faster Than the Speed of Light. Love her voice, so unique. Ted Nugent, uh, Great Gonzo's, the best of Ted Nugent. Billy Idol, Vital Idol. Eddie Money, Nothing to Lose. Standard CBS release again. Uh, Self-titled Eddie Money, again, standard CBS. Boys to Men, two, in the clear. Faith No More, um, King for a Day. Not, not familiar with this group. I just picked it up because I knew it was a, a different kind of group. Air Supply, Greatest Hits, and the Arrest of Orange there. Jane Child. Don't want to fall in love on there. Thompson Twins, Into the Gap. Of course, Club Release. Kenny G, Greatest Hits. Everybody likes Kenny G, right? Juicy, It Takes Two. Don't know why I have this in my collection. Fine Young Cannibals, Raw and Remixed. You Drive Me Crazy, I guess, is on there. And Peter Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive. Then we've got the Police Message in a Box. I have this on CD, so I have the original box and the booklet. So, picked up the tapes. Tape case number two of this, or cassette number two of this. Cassette three of Message in a Box. And then cassette four of Message in a Box. All in the clear. And then we have Billy Joel, The Stranger, standard CBS release. Then we start into some Prince cassette singles. I won't pull these out, but I have quite a few of them. Uh, and then we come over here. I'll just show these real quick. Uh, just a midry of cassette singles that I own. You can kind of get a look at of what I've got here. Uh, I'm not sure I'm keeping these, but got quite a few cassette singles. So I'll give you a big shot of those. And then, of course, I got Eddie Murphy, comedian and, and self-titled. Those are not music cassettes, obviously. So that completes my collection video. And, of course, I've got a separate video coming with my doubles, and I've got about 100, and they're sitting over there. i got to organize them. So finally, it's done. The cassette collection video is done and you know i'm just glad that i finally got it all here so i can post the video up for you guys so uh thanks for watching if you watched all the way to the end hope you enjoyed it and let's keep buying cassettes and uh 
you know, it's just a fun hobby. So I wish everybody the best in finding some some tapes out in the in the wild, and hopefully we can have a cassette week here on and get some new releases. And you know, hey, let's support the cassette community.